The action in professional hockey, she did it in an Atlanta Knights uniform. But things did not go so well for her. Todd Gillingham steps out of the box and into the play. Rayom tries to clear it, but it goes right back to Gillingham, who scores to make it one to nothing at the time. The final four to one for Salt Lake. But Rayom played a total of five minutes, 49 seconds, four saves on five shots, and allowed that goal. Well, we got to tell you, as much as we love to hear about anything you'd like to say tonight. Now, she tried out with Tampa, was sent to the minor leagues in a deal with Atlanta. She played tonight for the first time in a professional game, gave up one goal. The goal comes in this sequence here as the player comes out of the penalty box. She played six minutes, and after she played six minutes, she got yanked. I'll tell you what, there's no clear-cut reason. She faced three shots and stopped them all. She played six minutes and got yanked. It play 15 games with two teams based in Detroit and two in Windsor. The very first Turner Cup, the IHL's championship trophy presented annually to the playoff champion, went to the Detroit Auto Club team. The 1940s saw the league's popularity continue to grow, though each season saw movement in teams with a high of 11 in 1948 and a drop off to just five in 1949. The 50s ushered in a sense of stability. The Fort Wayne Comets joined the league in 1952 and remain today as the league's oldest and steadiest club. That same year saw the demise of the IHL's last Canadian team, the Chatham Maroons, making the IHL all American based. The Cincinnati Mohawks joined the IHL in 1952 and went on to win a record five consecutive Turner Cups from 53 to 57. Len Thornson, the all-time leading IHL scorer, began his career in 1956 with the Indianapolis Chiefs. In 13 stellar seasons, Thornson scored 479 goals and 898 assists. The league remained relatively stable through the 60s and 70s, and in 1980, the IHL expanded to its current schedule of 82 games per team. The unique tiebreaker shootout format to decide games tied at the end of overtime was adopted in 1986. This has added even more excitement to the game as there are no ties in IHL games. The 1990s has brought continued growth, stability, and excitement. With the addition of the Atlanta Knights, the Cincinnati Cyclones, and the Cleveland Lumberjacks to the league this year, the IHL is firmly positioned in major markets from Atlanta to San Diego. Last year's attendance was over 2.5 million and looks to break the 3 million mark this year. Eight of the 12 teams are the top affiliates of NHL clubs. And the IHL has truly become an international league. With the demise of the Soviet Union, there has been a flood of Russian and European players into the league. Last year, the San Diego Gulls acquired winger Dmitry Kvartlinov, and he promptly won the IHL's MVP and Rookie of the Year awards, having scored 60 goals and 118 points. He was the top draft choice of the Boston Bruins and is now one of their leading scorers. And just to drop a couple of other names, U.S. Olympic goaltender Ray LeBlanc and the unified team's gold medal winning goaltender Mikhail Stalenkov are two more headliners on IHL rosters. The International Hockey League has come a long way from its beginnings in 1945. The IHL is one of the premier professional hockey leagues and has a bright future ahead. You're looking live at downtown Atlanta and a city that's on fire with sports activity, hosting World Series participants two years in a row, the 1996 Olympics, and now the Omni, celebrating its 20th anniversary, has hockey back in this building as tonight. The International Hockey League's television season debuts on Prime as the Salt Lake Golden Eagles take on the Atlanta Knights. Hi everybody, with Mike Barrick, this is Ken Double, and welcome to our first broadcast of the year. It seems like yesterday we were here for the All-Star Game in the Omni last year, but now we're here for regular season action and anticipating an outstanding hockey game tonight with two of the IHL's best teams. Mike, the Atlanta Knights have been playing very well and have led the Eastern Conference all year. Salt Lake's been hot lately. Well, the Golden Eagles have won nine of their last 12. The Knights have won nine of 13. Both teams playing very well in their respective divisions. And as a result, 
I would assume we'll have another very competitive match between the two hockey teams. The Atlanta Knights, one of the best in the East, and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, one of the best in the West, and we'll be talking about the standings, the hot teams in the league, the hot players in the league as we go along. But we're getting set for a big night of hockey action in the Omni. We're glad you're with us on Prime Network tonight. The IHL on the Prime Network is brought to you by RCA Consumer Products, changing entertainment again. By Power Play Promotions, the official supplier of IHL products. And by American Semwood, the wood fiber cement people. We're coming right back to the Omni with hockey right after these messages. Buck, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Atlanta Knights. And before we get started, let's take a look quickly at the standings in the IHL. First of all, in the Eastern Conference, Atlanta has been the best team in the East all season long, right now with 40 points ahead of Cleveland and Cincinnati. Fort Wayne has really come on and been playing strong hockey of late to get themselves among what we might call the Elite Four. Mike, you've been following the teams very closely out west, and Salt Lake is trying to catch what everybody knows is the best team in the IHL, San Diego. Very competitive in the Pacific Division. So, like, four points ahead of the Roadrunners. But everybody knows the Gulls uh, lost another one last night in overtime and only one regulation loss. And, of course, Milwaukee leading in the Midwest Division of the International League as well in the Western Conference. And, Ken, let's go. We're underway in Atlanta. And the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, the visitors in red. Atlanta, the home team, in white. And the puck controlled by the Golden Eagles right now. In goal for Salt Lake, Andre Trefilov, an outstanding Soviet player with a 12-3-1 mark for the Golden Eagles. He's been great all year. David Littman between the pipes for the Atlanta Knights who come to center ice for the puck. Here's Brent Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky's youngest brother. Brent's just 20. He's had a couple of good games in a row. Two goals and two assists in his last two games. Now the puck here to the near side. Atlanta, for most of the year, not a real physical team but of late have begun to bang the body just a little bit more. Gretzky tips it to center. Kevin Wartman, an outstanding young defenseman for Salt Lake, plays it ahead, and that's a two-line pass. And we'll have a face-off. Early on, uh, tight to minute one gone into the opening period. The Eagles are the top farm team of the Calgary Flames of the National Hockey League. And Andre Trefiloff is one of their goaltenders of the future with that 2.62 goals against second in the league in that department. The Atlanta Knights are the top farm team of Tampa Bay. And our referee tonight is Derek Martin from Chicago, Illinois. And the linesmen this evening are Patrick Berry and Jay Jacobs. And the faceoff controlled by the Golden Eagles. Rich Chernomaz on the far board, number 16. Chernomaz, a Salt Lake mainstay for many years and a great player in this league for a long time. From center ice, the Knights jump it in. Early going, first period of play in the National Hockey League action. The first of a number of games all year on the Prime Network. Darren Stoke plays the puck for the Golden Eagles, another veteran defenseman. Now here's Struish, number 19. Taken away at the line on a good play by LaPuma. Atlanta the other way. Jason Lafreniere, number 10, can't control the puck. Behind the defense, McCarthy, Sandy McCarthy, getting hacked by Dan Vincelet. Now to the point, Kevin Guy. Good low shot deflected in front by Str uh, Brose, that is. And uh, a near miss there for the Golden Eagles. Shane Stevenson, number 19, just back from a broken foot. He missed three weeks with a fractured bone in his foot. This is his third game back. He heads to the bench after a short shift. Chernomaz dumps it in. And the Golden Eagles right now ranked last in the league in goals scored, and so they're going to rely on their goaltending and their defense here tonight. Offside, whistled at the line. Offside. There you see Keith Osborne for the Atlanta Knights. He is the IHL's leading goal scorer and one of the key players in this game tonight. He scored a goal last night. In fact, he's got four goals and four assists in his last four games. Started the season scoring at least a point in each of the first 20 games played by the Atlanta Knights. And uh, 
originally out of the St. Louis organization. He's in a free agent year. He can sign with anybody after this season and is looking forward to a big year. First round Blues pick in 1987, 12th overall that year, and he also spent parts of two seasons in the IHL with the Peoria Rivermen. Now Kevin Guy behind his own net. Loose puck played by Atlanta. Scott Boston from the point didn't get all of it. Big pump along the near boards. Kept in at the point by Rivers. And Trefiloff is out. Spins it to the far side. Played at the far point. There's a shot deflected in front and off Trefiloff's stick. Did a good job to follow that one all the way through. And we're coming back on the IHL on Prime after these messages. Some investment publications are at home on coffee tables. Barron's is destined for desks. While some publications serve as ornaments, Barron's serves as a tool. And while some barely get read, Barron's gets ruthlessly exploited by readers in search of insightful stock picks, undiscovered values, new offerings, and a wealth of other information you won't find anywhere else. So while some investment publications help furnish your home, Barron's helps furnish your portfolio. And that makes it very beautiful indeed. Subscribe now to Barron's and get 13 weeks for only $28 with a money-back guarantee. Call toll-free 800-255-5000. That's 800-255-5000. With Mike Barrett, Ken Double, we're back at the Omni. The Golden Eagles have been on the road for a while. Ken, it started last Saturday night in Cincinnati. They played in Fort Wayne, spent the week in Fort Wayne, played uh, Friday night in Cincinnati, Saturday afternoon here, and now here tonight against the Knights once more. Now off the faceoff, Scott Boston fires one, another save by Trefiloff. At center ice, the Knights deflected in. Trefiloff way out of the net, pops it along the boards. Atlanta right in front. Stan Drulia has he been a fine since he came down from Tampa Bay. Played very well. Couldn't complete the play there. Salt Lake the other way. Jumped in by Struish and then it's called offside at the line. Golden Eagles have uh, the most power play opportunities against. The very physical team traditionally is uh, We'll see uh, how the Golden Eagles play it along the boards. Uh, Gene Ubriaco wasn't too happy about the physical play in the game on Saturday. The Eagles traditionally a very physical team. The Knights not as strong, but very skillful up front. It was a 6-3 score in this building yesterday afternoon. Atlanta defeated Salt Lake. Salt Lake defeated Atlanta twice earlier in the season, right after Thanksgiving. In a period of time when... Uh, Gene Ubriaco, as we have an icing call here, Gene Ubriaco was just not at all happy with the way the uh, Atlanta Knights were playing at that point in time, and that started Salt Lake on a heck of a run, Mike. It sure did, and uh, the Golden Eagles have won 9 of 12, as we talked about at the outset, and one of their more physical players is Alex Nikoluk, a rookie out of Cornell University, and, uh, of course, one of the greats of all time uh, from that school, legendary Hall of Famer Ken Dryden. No score, three and a half minutes into the game. Ken Hodge, just down from Tampa Bay. Two years ago, was a 30-goal scorer for Boston. Oh, Gretzky just missed the backhander in front. And a whistle and a penalty coming up. Holding is the call. The Atlanta Knights are going on the power play. Moment ago, what a great play for Gretzky as he just missed cutting in front and heading to the penalty box, Kevin Wartman. Your attention, please. Outstanding defenseman holding is the call. Last year, Workman was the American-born Rookie of the Year and was the fourth of four consecutive Salt Lake players, including Paul Ramheim, and Tim Sweeney, and C.J. Young, who have won that award. But right now, he picks up the minor penalty, and the Knights go on the power play. Gene Ubriaco, 54 years of age, former Pittsburgh Penguin coach, wants to get his power play unit going. Atlanta on the power play, hitting it. At 22%, third in the lead. Capuano has a roll off his stick, and it's cleared all the way down by the Golden Eagles. The Knights in the power play uh, rank at fifth in the league, 35 for 155, just over 22% with the man advantage, and the Golden Eagles rank fifth also in penalty killing. 
Now Capuano dumps it in. Guy gets there first, but fans on his clearing attempt, but is able to get the puck up to Forsland. He sends it all the way down. Littman plays it ahead quickly to try and beat Salt Lake on the player chain. Number seven is Ken Hodge. Played two games, has a goal and four assists. Now across the line, Capuano, number 11. And the zone is cleared. Salt Lake doing a good job, what we call standing them up at the blue line. Don't let the team come across the line offensively with any kind of thrust or any kind of a set pattern. The Eagles are used to penalty killing. They have given up more power play opportunities, 190 coming into the game. So they're well versed in the penalty killing department. Now the Knights have changed their power play unit and across the line, they roll it in front for Lafreniere. Knocks down the high pass to the deep slot and Hodge. With Boston at the other point. Now here's Gretzky to Boston. He tees it up. And a glove save by Trefiloff. And you get just an inkling of the acrobatic manner in which this young Soviet plays the net. He is really fun to watch. Well, we saw that glove save. And, you know, Glenn Hall, the Hall of Fame goaltender, uh, played with the St. Louis Blues and the Chicago Blackhawks. He says that Trefiloff has the quickest glove he's ever seen, and that includes guys like Sawchuk and Font and Ken Dryden. He says that uh, Trefiloff in that department is the quickest he's ever seen. Front air, Gretzky and Stevenson, the forward line for the remainder of the power play. 25 seconds left for the Knights. Now Boston to the far side. Now here's Rivers. Gretzky looking for the opening. On the slot, the shot fired, another good save. Rivers gets it back, throws another one on that, the rebound loose in front. Still loose, Trefilov went down and made the save. Now the penalty just about over. The front of the air fires one, knocked down by the defense, and picked up, here comes Salt Lake. Across the line, little Hafey had a hat trick last night. Whistles one just wide of the near post. Now the Knights break out of their zone. Carrying in is Boston. Boston rolls into the far corner, heads to the bench. And the puck played in the neutral zone. We've played just over six minutes in the first period. No score in the hockey game. Here's an interception by Kevin Guy. And the big guy carries in. Rivers knocks it off his stick. But throws right in front. Near miss there. Cleared on a good play by Buchanan. All the way down. This will be an icing call against Atlanta. No score, 13-34 left in the first period. And we're coming back to the Omni for more IHL action on the Prime Network after this timeout. Nipper and Chipper show us what the RCA home theater with SRS sound looks like. Now they show us what it feels like. Looks like. Feels like. Looks like feels like. Any questions? He's from around here. Back at the Omni and a near miss on the power play for the Knights. Sean Rivers took the shot. Truffloff made a stick save and the rebound came out to Lafreniere and uh, Truffloff got a piece of that also. So a uh, good uh, pair of scoring chances for the Knights. Now we're ready to resume. Ken Hodge, number seven, to take the face off against David St. Pierre. Has not seen a lot of action for Salt Lake. He's in the lineup tonight with their coach, Bob Francis. He wears number 17. He scored his first professional goal last Sunday in Fort Wayne and then capped it off with the game winner in the shootout. Lippman can't play the puck behind the net. Forslund for the bouncing puck, leaves it in the corner. St. Pierre centering pass, knocked wide. And Timmy Berglund sends it ahead. A three-sports star at the University of Minnesota. Berglund, one heck of an athlete. Wears number 29 for the Atlanta Knights. There's Bob Francis. Bob Francis, 34 years of age. The son of Emil Francis, the cat. 
Of course, uh, he was coach, general manager of the New York Rangers for a long time, the St. Louis Blues, and now with the Hartford Whalers. And Bob also played in the International Hockey League with the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, was their captain in 1986-87 as the team captured the first of two straight Turner Cups. Bob looks like maybe the road's getting to him. He didn't look too happy during that little exchange with one of his players. He's a fiery guy, just like his dad, and I'll tell you what, one of the more competitive guys you'll find in this league. Nice breakout pass. And Spruce carrying in. Littman keeps the puck away from him. And now a high floating clearing play. Lafreniere is trying to steal it. Now as the Knights push it back in, they'll have to clear the zone. Otherwise, it'd be an offside call. Again, so far, very little hitting in the game. It's been a pretty much blue line to blue line game in the early going. Now at the near point, Lapuma. The youngster fires. Good block by Clark. And now Salt Lake had a three-on-one brewing and couldn't make the connection on the pass. Tough break there. Now the Golden Eagles give it up to Vince Gillette and behind the play. A couple of players are heading to the penalty boxes here. Well, Puma and Gillingham colliding to the left of the Atlanta goal. Vince Gillette was down there too. And it was Gillingham going into the corner to the left of the net. And boy, you can see the in collision with Lapuma. Lapuma was tossed out of the game on Saturday for an instigation in a fight. And in this particular instance, Gillingham picks up the penalty. And so does Lapuma, matching minors. The two penalty minute leaders for these teams, Lapuma, 138 minutes in penalties. Gillingham, just shy of 100. And now it'll be four on four in front of the goaltenders. This is one of the new rules back in hockey. For many years, uh, it was kind of the Wayne Gretzky rule. In coincidental minors, and they would replace the players and skate five on five. But now it's four on four in front of the goalies to open up the rink. And this is very uh, interesting hockey now. Gillingham and Lapuma, two each for roughing at 7.51. Now Rivers gives it to Lands. A 10-year NHL veteran, Rick Lands. One of the main liners on the pack line for Gino Briaco, who's got five rookies dressed for defense. Now Stan Drulia, his shot, got a little too much of it. And Salt Lake clears the zone. Here's Wartman. What a great year he had last year. Great rush up the rink. It's loose in front. The rebound smothered by Littman. Right in front. Tim Harris did everything but score. And now a melee in front of the Atlanta net. Well, Kevin Wordman took the original rush, and the stop was made. The puck was loose in front, and Harris came barreling in there. And then pushing and shoving develops as uh, Patrick Berry separates Harris from a couple of Atlanta players to the luck of the goal. So the best scoring chance really for Salt Lake in this game, a couple of uh, scoring pops earlier. And it was Wordman who made the original play to the right of the net, worked in, the puck bouncing around in front, then Harris took the shot, Littman with a, a scoop uh, with that glove hand to make the stop. And then coming to the defense of their goaltender, that's Sean Rivers, number 24 for Atlanta, and he's a little guy. Rivers, 5'10", 185, dripping wet, uh, but he's feisty. Litt Littman got a shot in there also, and he uh, uh, was able to get a little bit of a glove hand in there. 11.24 left to go first period. No score in the hockey game. We're at the Omni. IHL Hockey on the Prime Network. Our premier telecast this year. We're four on four in front of the goalies for the next minute as Rivers carries in for Atlanta. Rivers leaves it in front, taken away by Thomas Forslund. Here comes Forslund, number 41. Leaves it for Melrose. A big shot and a big save by Littman. Littman, uh, an 11th round Sabres pick in 87. A good glove save on the play down into the Atlanta zone. 11 minutes left in this first period. No score in the hockey game. Both teams have had a couple of opportunities. Littman, who was called up early, he had a great start for Atlanta, was called up by Tampa Bay, and then sat for about seven games there before coming back down here. And then with that long layoff, he was a little rusty. But he's come back real strong since J.C. Bergeron now has been called up by Tampa Bay. Great season last year, 29 victories in the American League, was the best goaltender in that uh, league last season. Now here's Hodge. A little room at center ice. Hodge playing his third game for Atlanta. Blisters a shot, the rebound! A 
Oh, Boston was there for it and couldn't get a stick on the puck. Well, Andre Trefloff again with the reflexes in front of the Salt Lake goal and uh, was able to pounce on top of the loose puck. He ranked second in the league in goals against the only goaltender with a better average, Rick Knickel, the San Diego goals. And again, the uh, Knights worked in. It was Hodge and across the line, worked against Sulk and then took the shot. Trefloff makes the save. The rebound comes out and he makes the second save also on the player cutting in, Scott Boston. Austin, and another couple of sequences of saves for the Salt Lake goaltender. Now the Knights win the draw. 30 seconds still to run on the coincidental minor penalty. We're still four on four on the rink. Hodge battling Stolt. A couple of veteran players there. Hodge comes away with it. Stolt runs him into the boards. Hodge kicks it cleverly to Osborne. Couldn't get around Wartman. Wartman, an outstanding defenseman. Wartman, uh, last year, as mentioned, had a tremendous offensive season and actually played at the All-Star game right in this building here at the Omni last year. And, of course, the penalty now is expired, and the teams are at even strength right now. Five on five. Ooh. Salt Lake jumps it in. The Knights played it on the far side. Kept in front for Forsland. Now there's one right in front of near miss there for Clark. Forsland keeps it alive, but then the Knights clear the zone. Gary Clark having a scoring chance. He's the younger brother of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Wendell Clark. Rick lands with a puck at his own line. Feeds it ahead for Vincelette. And now LaPuma. Vincelette just traded by Tampa Bay to Philadelphia for Steve Casper. And uh, the Philadelphia organization has said, Vinny, you stay down here with uh, Atlanta, and we'll figure out what to do with you later. Their farm club, Hershey, has a whole bunch of people. We've got another penalty as players push and shove behind the net. It all started with Clark and the Pumas. The puck was coming up the left wing slider to the Atlanta zone, and all of a sudden, back of the play, we uh, had the two combatants into the Atlanta zone. We'll announce the penalties when we come back. No score at the Omni on the Prime Network's telecast of IHL Hockey. Back in a minute. Every week, Barron's arrives to an unusual reception. Readers plow into it in search of undiscovered values, emerging stocks, and market insights. A fresh issue of Barron's doesn't stay fresh long. And that's the beauty of it. Subscribe now to Barron's and get 13 weeks for only $28 with a money-back guarantee. Call toll-free 800-255-5000. That's 800-255-5000. There's only one thing they're into as much as Domino's Pizza. Now, order Domino's and get your Domino's $25 million Nintendo Instant Win Game card with a chance to win thousands of free Super NES, Game Boy systems, Super Mario Kart games, plus savings on pizza and Coke Classic. Call Domino's. You can win Nintendo stuff. And try our new Domino's Twisty Bread, free with our unlimited topping medium, just $9.99. Back at the Omni, Chris LaPuma for the Atlanta Knights. Sits two minutes. Yeah, he draped down Kerry Clark as Clark was barreling into the Atlanta zone and uh, picks up a holding penalty at 10.43. And as a result, Salt Lake will go on the power play. And they're last in the league in that department with only 20 power play goals. And the Knights have a pretty decent penalty killing. They're only uh, fourth in the league in that department. Although Salt Lake despite their troubles on the power play. Got three yesterday here at the Omni in four attempts. And all three by Sean Hafey. So that made it even more interesting because of the woes that they've had with the man advantage this year. Now the Knights stand truly at doing a good job to drag a little time on this penalty. 8.45 to go in the first period. A minute 25 left on the Salt Lake power play. Their first power play of the hockey game. Al McCarthy behind the net, feeds Chernomaz, he can't control the puck, and Capuano's got a little room, feeds it all the way down. Good play by Capuano, he saw the opening, rather than make a pass, he just flipped it all the way down, eats up the clock, and now the Knights change up defensively. And again, penalty killing. The Knights, 81% of the time they've been short-handed, they've been able to save off the opposition. Al Struge feeds it around to the far side, and the puck is cleared to center right. 
so far. Salt Lake struggling a little bit, trying to get themselves set on the power play, which has 44 seconds to run. Miranda doing a nice job of keeping Salt Lake bottled in their own end. Now they have Hodge up front with Berglund, the two veterans up front to kill it off. David St. Pierre rolls it in across the line, but it's taken away by Rivers. He sends it all the way down. There's a long pass ahead for Gillingham. Big guy dumps it in. Clark trying to make the play. Kept alive by Guy. And Guy has the puck taken away, but not cleared by Boston. Ten seconds left on the power play. Battle for the puck in the corner. Gillingham centering pass taken by Lafreniere. And Lapuma is out of the penalty box. Here's a two on two. Long shot by Vince Solette. Pad saved by Trefalon. No real good scoring chances for Salt Lake with the man advantage. The Knights did a terrific job in the penalty kill. Lafreniere with an open net. Couldn't find pay dirt. Trefalon went down early, but Lafreniere couldn't get it home. There's another shot knocked down by the defense. Now Atlanta buzzing the net. Penalty coming up on the Golden Eagles, and there's the whistle. Well, uh, both uh, Kevin Guy and Darren Stoke were holding up Atlanta players back of the net. Gene Stevenson was causing some havoc to the left of the goal. Also in front was Vince Eleven. It appears that Clark is going to get called for the minor to the right of the Salt Lake goal. And it was right in front when the Atlanta team, Julia, had a good scoring chance, or actually Lafreniere. And then Trefalov was able to make the stop. And then uh, uh, Clark came over to the side and picks up the minor penalty on that play. And it's Boy, a near-miss opportunity. Vince Select gets the shot away. And as usual, Trefiloff can't just stop the puck. He does the splits. He goes down, throws his legs in every direction. Very acrobatic between the pipes. Unorthodox, to say the least. But as they say, we don't care if you stand on your head as long as you stop the puck, right? No question about that. And he's done that quite a bit with over a 90% save percentage this year. Clark the roughing penalty at 13-14. Atlanta on their second power play. They're 0 for 1 so far in this game. Now Osborne, the IHL's leading goal scorer, can't control it across the line. Lands will reload the gun for the Atlanta Knights. Atlanta looking for their 20th win of the year. Again, the Knights have been great on home ice. 10-2-1 this season at the Omni in their first year back in the International Hockey League, their first year ever in this league. Hockey back in this building, and the fans responding pretty well. Attendance growing steadily here. I'll tell you what, they love their hockey in Cincinnati and Milwaukee, drawing getting close to 10,000 a game in those buildings. Now, oh, a near miss there. Osborne slid the puck around, and Drulia almost got it behind the goaltender. And we have another penalty coming up. It may be Paul Holden for Salt Lake. I'm not sure back of the goal, as the Knights were again pressing into the Salt Lake territory. It is a holding call as uh, Atlanta again buzzing. And if that's the case, we'll have a two-man power Salt play Lake coming up. Atlanta will have a two-man advantage for the next 59 seconds. Holding indeed is the call. Yeah, but it's actually against Trefiloff as the play was back of the goal. He's been called for holding and delay of the game this season. And the rules in Europe are quite a bit different. And Trefiloff has had a habit of coming out, and he came out of his goal crease area and held the player Drulli in front of the net. And he gets called, and it wasn't holding, although he leveled Drulli after the play. Serving the penalty will be Harris. Check that. Yeah, it'll be Tim Harris. Yep. Yeah, Trefiloff also has been called a couple of times for delay of the game for freezing the puck outside the crease. And in the International League, uh, you're not allowed to do that in pro hockey over here. Over in Europe, you're allowed to hold the puck outside that goal crease. He's been called for that a few times as well. Now the Knights. Roll it right in front. Atlanta trying to jam it home. The front air couldn't get the job done. A two-man advantage for the next 40 seconds. 20 is Stan Drulia. 10 is Jason Lafreniere back to Drulia. There's a deep slot. Hodge, a one-timer save. The rebound popped up in the air. Loose in the slot. Lafreniere trying to jam it home. Finally, it's underneath the goaltender. 
Trafalov able to make the saves with his team two men down. The Atlanta Knight two-man power play will continue after we take time out on the IHL on Prime. Every Monday night from 7 to 8 o'clock. I was about 24 when I started, you know, really... Ken Hodge got the boomer away from the deep slot, but Trefiloff up to the task. Another great save. The shots on goal, 14-3 already in favor of Atlanta, and Trefiloff stopped them all, and now has to face a two-man power play for 20 seconds with Trefiloff on that holding call. Now Rick lands on the far side. Fires it high off the glass. Hodge keeps it in. Lafreniere looking for the pass. Clark is back on. It's now just a one-man power play, but still another 57 seconds to work for Atlanta. Julia lands. He had a lane to the net. Fired, but Trefiloff made the save. Back to lands. Now the front of the air. Trying to break the scoreless tie. Atlanta on their second power play of the hockey game. Great puck possession for Atlanta on this power play, but not too many opportunities, although the puck possession is terrific. This is what they do. There's a good pass save on a shot by Trulia. They don't, they don't take a lot of shots. They try and make the perfect pass. Trefilov, very active, out to clear that centering pass. The Lance has had the most chances. Hodge ah, just missed the far post. And the Knights... Reload at center ice with just five seconds left. So the Salt Lake Golden Eagles got the job done and kill off the two-man disadvantage. The penalty box is empty. We're back at five on five in front of the goaltenders. As mentioned, Ken, uh, Ken has Salt Lake uh, a lot of ex experience this season in the penalty kill department by far. A differential of 48 more power play opportunities for the opposition than they've had offensively. And as a result, they've gotten pretty skilled at killing off penalties. Their goaltending has been pretty strong as well. Now Rivers throws a long one on net. The Trefiloff sends it all the way down. This will be an icing call. Maybe he thought they were still shorthanded. Uh, we've got three minutes and 12 seconds left in this first period, and we're coming back to the Omni for more of this game featuring the Atlanta Knights and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles on Prime. Who's getting happy? Who's having fun? Who's been to Hooters? Come on, everyone, it's at Hooters. Hooters. Hooters makes you happy. Hooters makes you happy. This is the medal Schlitz just won at the Great American Beer Festival. Schlitz won Best American Lager Beer, beating several major brands. We're proud of this medal, but we're even more proud of the quality and great taste of Schlitz beer. So choose what the judges at the Great American Beer Festival chose. Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. There you see the league leaders in the IHL. Hubie McDonough from San Diego with his 50 points. Keith Osborne of Atlanta is second with the most goals in the IHL at 21. Osborne, uh, as you mentioned, uh, scored a goal yesterday and has been off fire, on fire all season long. And uh, acquired by the Tampa Bay Lightning in the expansion draft this past summer. Now the puck played all the way down. We're going to have another icing call. 3.04 left to go in the first period. No score in the hockey game between Bob Francis's Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Atlanta Knights coached by Gene Ubriaco, who has been around. Ubi has been around forever. He sure has, and in fact, uh, actually played a game in the old Western Hockey League when he was 19 years of age against Bob Francis's father, Abel the Cat, who was a goaltender in uh, Spokane, and Gene Ubriaco, 50 four years of age and has uh, coached a myriad of different teams in the Central League and the Eastern League and also the IHL started with the Milwaukee Admirals. He was the first coach of the Milwaukee Admirals in this league back in the 70s. Last year, two years, coached the uh, Italian national team. Coached for the Olympics, Capilano. Number 11. 
on a great rush up the rink and a near miss opportunity. Salt Lake clears the puck. Osborne's deflection at center. Played into the Atlanta zone. Melrose dumps it in behind the net. John Rivers with Salt Lake four checkers. And they get the puck. Paul Holden at center ice. Flips a high one in. Rivers has a player on side and a bouncing puck. Timmy Berglund couldn't connect. Takes a big bump from Holden. Scramble along the far boards. And it's kicked to center ice by the Golden Eagles. It's sent right back in by Atlanta. Inside two minutes left here in the first period. Team's getting more physical on the boards. The first 10 minutes or so, very light. It's now picking up as far as the physical play is concerned. And so often, not that it's got to become dirty physical play, just, just more physical. Get a body on a player, and that can ignite a team so well. Now high. Very, fairly clean, except right there, a holding call, I believe, in front. It may have been Kevin Guy holding the player in front of the net. Vince Solette, we'll see if that's the call. There were some other players involved, and Paul Holden skates to the penalty box also. So it looks like he'll be the guilty eagle, and Atlanta will have another power play, their fourth opportunity here in the first period. And it was uh, holding, just hauling down Hodge as he worked right into the Salt Lake zone. Good move by Hodge, and Holden didn't have much of uh, a choice in the matter with Hodge headed toward the net. Yeah, it was a good scoring opportunity for Atlanta. And the Knights have, with the advantage on the man power place here in the first period, have had the bulk of the puck possession into the Salt Lake zone. Now Stevenson, 19 on the left wing, Lafreniere at center, and now Jean Bluin, number 23 on the ice for the Knights on this power play. Lafreniere to Stevenson. To the deep slot, high. He can fire the puck. Now Land. Ooh, that one almost got through. It goes to the far side. Wartman's going to get there first, but he can't clear the zone. The goaltender does. Good play by Trepanoff as Lands couldn't keep the bouncing puck in at the blue line. Twice he's played the puck outside the line, once for the ice. And this time in a penalty kill situation, Trepanoff himself able to clear the zone. Now it's center ice. Good play by... Gross. Yep, time to clear the puck. And now here's Hodge with a rush up the ring. Drop pass to pretty end. Yeah, knocked down by the defense. It never got to the goaltender. Near miss for the Atlanta Knights and a great play by the Salt Lake defense. A great rush up the rink by Atlanta. And the Eagles are able to clear the zone once more. It's now Chernomans and Struish up front to kick it off. 45 seconds on the Atlanta power play. John Bluin. We have just 10 seconds left in the period. And with the puck cleared at center, this power play will carry over to the next period. The Knights dump it all the way in. And there's the horn. So the first period is over. It's scoreless after the first 20 minutes. When the second period commences, Atlanta will have 26 seconds on a power play to start that second period. An interesting, well-played first period of hockey. And during our intermission, all kinds of interesting things for you, including a chat with the commissioner, Tom Barry of the International Hockey League. Interesting features to pass along as well, including a look at Manon Rayom. And we'll have all that for you and more as our telecast from the Omni continues. We'll be back with our first intermission after we take this time out. You're watching IHL Hockey on Prime. After the first 20 minutes of hockey, no score at the Omni. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Atlanta Knights. Some great opportunities at both ends of the rink, particularly for Atlanta in this first period, but we're scoreless after one. Hello again, everybody. This is Ken Double. And joining me during this first intermission, the commissioner of the IHL, Tom Barry. And Tom, I know there are so many things that you're thrilled about as far as this International Hockey League is concerned, not the least of which is national television exposure with Prime. Well, it's great to be here in Atlanta and have this production going on. The Prime people are doing a wonderful job, and we're really thrilled that they're able to pick it up and carry it across the country because our brand of hockey is indeed superb, and we're delighted that this opportunity is here. And it's only the first of many, so 
and we're looking forward to many more like this. Indeed. And for you fans who may not be real familiar with IHL hockey, this is a league that's been around for a long time, some 40 years plus, but it's had as a league its ups and downs, and certainly on an upswing lately, Tom, from a league of players on their way down to a lot of unnecessary physical type of play, goon hockey, if you will, to now major affiliations with NHL teams and great young talent on its way up. Well, we're very fortunate. The league is entering its 48th year this year, and, you know, for about 40 years, it pondered along as a pretty good uh, amateur league for the players to play out their careers. But in the last seven or eight years, thanks to the good work of Bud Poyle, our previous commissioner, and others of his ilk along the way have all made it possible that we have such a great effort today by the young players and the teams that are affiliated with our clubs, and it all is breaking into one heck of a great hockey club, so uh, league. So we're very pleased that this thing has happened. Outside of teams like Fort Wayne that's been around since 1952 and Kalamazoo and Peoria, some teams in some of the smaller cities, the other thing that's been spectacular is the growth into major markets for this uh, league. Well, we've been very fortunate. We have a good group of owners that have brought in the expertise that they have in marketing in many areas and brought it forth so that the game of hockey could become a reality in a lot of the major cities. And fortunately for them and for us and for everybody, the spectators have taken well to the game. So we've got a tremendous effort of people who enjoy the game of hockey being brought to major league cities they no longer have to watch it only on TV when and if it ever was there so we're very thrilled with this part of our efforts too well the expansion too into Cincinnati and Atlanta and Cleveland in the last couple of years the growth into Kansas City and Southern California bodes well what's on the horizon I know always the applications come to your desk well that they do and we're certainly uh, hoping that certainly what happened here in the National League this last week in Anaheim and Miami Florida is going to mean two more teams for our league and we're anxious to have some more. We have a couple right now that we're sorting through applications, that is, for a few other cities besides the ones that we may get and uh, are hopeful in the NHL's new, new affiliation. And I think pretty sure we'll have a couple of great ones out west here for the new year, so the new season. We're really uh, comfortable with the way things are going, and we're sort of reassessing what our future will be as a league. But I think that you're going to see a few more cities coming on in here in the next year. Congratulations on the great growth of this league during your watch and continued success to you, Tom. Well, thank you very much, Ken. Great to be here today. Tom Berry, the commissioner and president of the IHL, and we'll be back to the Omni after we take this time out. No score on Prime. No score after the first period of play in our game at the Omni, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Atlanta Knights. One of the most intriguing stories in the IHL all season long, the road to hockey stardom for Mano Rayom, the female goaltender. I started to play hockey at five years old. I started to skate at three. My parents uh, make the outside eyes. It's why I started to skate very young. And my two brothers play hockey. And uh, when I would like to play with him, they said, go in the net and we're going to shut on you. And it's why I start like this. For me, it's not important to be the first woman. Uh, the fact is, I'm the first woman, and uh, if they can help other women, I think it's good. Uh, because when I was young, I never seen women uh, at this level, and it's why I never think uh, to go higher. And uh, sometimes, when I have some problem because I'm a girl, so I was discouraged, and uh, uh, sometimes I think to stop. And it's why now, if they can help other women to continue to play, or if they can help other men too, if uh, some um, boy said, if a girl can do this, I can do this, I think it's good too. I practice every day with uh, the guys and uh, after uh, every day I have uh, outside training and uh, I do some uh, weights and uh, aerobic thing and flexibility too. And so I, I work out every day and to try to catch up and uh, to be stronger on the ice. Oh, when I was young, uh, one of my favorite goaltenders uh, was Daniel Bouchard. Uh, he played for uh, Quebec Nordics, and now I have the chance to meet him because he lives in Atlanta. Uh, it's good to uh, meet him. 
I think I have a lot of pressure for this game. I don't have to put more in my shoulder when I say this NHL game. I just think uh, to do my best and to concentrate on the game. And uh, I was very nervous uh, before the game, but when uh, I go on the ice, uh, I feel good. No, I never think uh, to be here uh, before. I never see a woman in uh, professional hockey. It's why uh, every year I want to play because I love uh, that. And uh, But I love the competition. It's why I want to go higher every year. Manon Rayom, certainly easy on the eyes and uh, a great work ethic. It's incredible the great courage that she shows. You know, the book on her at five foot six is going to be shoot high. And at practice, the guys are banging it off the face mask and the helmet. And she just sits there and takes it. And it's one of the reasons she's won over her teammates. But well, Jean Ubriaco mentioned to me that uh, she actually was on her knees taking shots so she could improve her glove. And there was discussion that perhaps she might even see some action before this game concludes. I think a lot will depend on what happens with the scoreboard, but we'll see about that. And when we come back, we'll have the statistics, highlights, and more from our initial game on the Prime Network. No score in Atlanta. On the Prime Network will be Friday night, December the 19th, Cleveland at Cincinnati, available on most of the Prime affiliates around the country. We're looking forward to that one. And we're looking forward to second period action here. Although I'll guarantee you the Golden Eagles, maybe not for this fan, who's obviously an Atlanta fan, the Golden Eagles want to see a little less of this and more offense for their side. 17 to three shots on goal led by Atlanta. Ken Hodge is shot and uh, Truffleoff got a piece, a rebound with Lafreniere in front. He stops that one too and then covers up. And the Knights outshot Salt Lake, as you talked about, 17 to three in the opening period. And again, uh, the Knights work right in on goal later in the period. On this play, good play by Lafreniere. Better play by the defense to keep that from getting on. There you see Manol Rayom. And how more timely can it be? We just finished the feature piece on Manol Rayom. She will start the second period for Jean Ubriaco and the Atlanta Knights, making her first appearance of the regular season. Manol Rayom is between the pipes and getting the encouragement and congratulations from her teammates when she stepped in to scrape up the crease in front of the net. A standing ovation from the crowd here at the Omni. And I'll tell you what, it's exciting for all of uh, the sports fans throughout this country. She has to be one nervous individual right now. She played that one NHL exhibition game, but this is a regular season international game, and we'll see how she does here in the second period. Many of the Eagle players were aware that she might play, so uh, we'll see how the Knights play in front of her. We'll see if Salt Lake could change anything offensively to try and pepper her here in the second period, and they're giving her a standing ovation. Shots on goal in the first 17 to three in favor of the Atlanta Knights. The truffle off was brilliant, but right now, all that overshadowed by Manon Rayon. It's amazing, she won't be 21 until February 24th. Five foot six, 135 pounds. Was 3-0-0 for the Canadian national women's team last year, posting a goals against average of 0.67, and was impressive enough to fill in Tony Esposito the Tampa Bay and Atlanta organizations to win a tryout. She stops the first shot, the rebound. Cleared by the defense. It'll go down as trivia. Sean Hafey, the first professional shooter. On Manon Rayom, and she stops him cold. She has won goals, goals last year, King in the league, and she made a pretty good save. And as we indicated during the intermission, the book on Manon will be fire and high. And I'll guarantee you she'll be tested high early on. Top shelf will be the place to shoot right now. The puck into the Salt Lake zone, Atlanta. Clears it to the point, and it's dumped back in. The Knights will have to clear the zone. Here's Kevin Guy for the Golden Eagles. Gillingham can't catch up with the puck, and the Knights are headed the other way. Caught him in the change. Stevenson. A shot and a save, and that rebound is cleared to center. And a chase for the puck here. Buchanan with Gillingham. Buchanan runs him off the play, and Manol Rayom steers it to the far side. Shot and a goal. No goal. 
that Kevin Werman left the shot. Gillingham, I think, may have had his stick above his shoulders. It was deflected. We'll see if that's the reason. It Derek was a high Martin. shot. Derek Martin is saying no goal. And instead, a penalty coming up for interference no called goal. against Gillingham. The Atlanta Knights get a break as Derek Martin calls an interference penalty and waves off the goal, and he called it immediately. There was no hesitation on his part. Here's another look as Wartman fires the biscuit. And it was deflected, but uh, they say Gillingham was in the crease, but he was outside the crease, so I'm not sure if that was uh, a good call or not. Interference, however, so evidently he had enough in front to screen her out of the play to get the call kick. I think that's a break for the Atlanta Knights. And now the puck is behind the Salt Lake net. Atlanta again on the power play. The puck along the near boards. Here's Buchanan at the point. Fired it too high. And the puck on Trefiloff is fire high too, so the glass may get a workout here in this second period. Jason Lafreniere with a puck. Now Buchanan. Hodge. Faked it, then decided to shoot it. Chernomaz got in front of it, right in front. The goaltender steers it wide, but then Buchanan fires one, kept in now by Hodge. The shot again knocked down by Chernomaz. Good play out front by Chernomaz, who's able to clear the zone. Now well, the Eagles have another 59 seconds to kill on the penalty. Just one shot so far, except for the goal that was disallowed on the 20-year-old Manon Rayon. Now the puck. Carry to center ice. Julia has it knocked off his stick, and Rivers has it. Now the Golden Eagles able to clear. Thirty seconds left on the power play. Knights up the far side, and it's cleared again by the Golden Eagles. That went on goal, so she makes the stop on that one, although it was from center ice. Oh, the Knights give it up at center ice, but Julia picks it right back up. There's a break. Julia with Campuano to the far corner and Rivers. Now Julia with just five seconds on the power play. Rivers bangs a shot, knocked down in front. The penalty is over. Gillingham's between the defenders. Cutting in, Rayom knocks the puck. Right back to Gillingham. Count the goal. So Gillingham makes amends. He steps out of the penalty box, and Rayom could not clear the puck. Gillingham popped it in behind her. It's one to nothing, Salt Lake. Interesting story there is Gillingham played at Three Rivers, the same junior team that Manon Rayom played for last year. Gillingham played there two seasons ago and actually oh, practiced against her. And strangely enough, he scores the first ever professional goal in a regular game against Manon Rayom. And great work by the camera crew to get Gillingham right out of the box. And there you see the puck right back into his uniform and then into the net. And if there's an area that Manol Rayom is working on more than anything else, it is handling the puck. It's the strength factor where she just isn't strong enough. And there it comes into play as she couldn't get the puck past Gillingham. Now, Salt Lake. Putting on the pressure, Atlanta able to carry to center. Here's Berglund. Jimmy Berglund across the line. Rolls it into the corner. Truffle off out. Played along the board. Now Truffle off way out. Berglund has it. Here's a, a Hodge, rather. Boston, this shot deflected wide. LaPuma fans on a play, and it's at center ice. Played by Timmy Berglund. And now we've got whistles, and again, La Puma getting into it at the far side. Yeah, La Puma and Tim Harris colliding along the far side right in front of the Atlanta players bench. Harris part of an NCAA championship with Lake Superior. And you know, Ken, Bob Francis was very concerned about Benone Rayon playing goal. He felt that the Knights would really tighten up defensively. And that was his big concern coming into the game tonight. Harris and LaPuma both sit two minutes for roughing. 4.18 into the second period. So once again, we'll be four on four in front of the goaltenders, and there's Gene Ubriaco, who made the call. 
Manol Rayom to play the second period of this game. Maybe two periods. We'll have to wait and see. Talked to him before the game. He said it, uh, he felt about this time of the season, he might give her a chance, and he sure has here tonight. Now the Knights carry in. River's shot is wide. Turnamaz beats Stolt. Has it knocked off his stick by the front of the air. And Stoke reloads the gun. Here's Turnamaz. He carries in. Gets around Lands. Finally pinched off the play. Stevenson runs St. Pierre into the boards. And now Lands chases down the puck. The veteran carries the puck well. Hits the red line, spins away from a check. Leads it ahead for Stevenson. Stevenson not showing much of the ill effects off that broken foot. He's got great wheels. Now Chernomaz, his shot deflected high. And Rivers has the funny carom off the glass. Stevenson plays it at center. The front of the air is there. Now Rivers has a little room. He booms a shot. Oh, Trefilov had a little trouble with that one. Took it off the blocker. Almost flipped the catching glove over across his body to make that save. Now Forza. Pinched off the play by Buchanan. Holden keeps it in. And now Forsland is hurt behind the net. Very slow to get up. I don't think we have a penalty coming up here. I think it was just a good hit. One to nothing. The Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights. 14-11 left in the second period of the Omni, and we're coming back for more of the IHL on Prime. Buchanan got the stick up a little bit on Forsland. Got away with it. No penalty called. And Manon Rayom is back to the bench. Well, so Gene, Gene, Gene apparently uh, saw enough in almost six minutes of time. And that uh, he lifted her so quickly? Well, actually, it surprised me more that he played her in the first place. But uh, that's all right. Gene's the coach and uh, knows exactly what he's doing and why. The most important factor in whether to play or not play Mano was the reaction of the team. And in the last couple of weeks, the team has really come around, uh, and the whole experiment has come around because Manoa's gotten more comfortable as a team member. They've gotten more comfortable with her. And uh, that was the uh, that was the whole reason, the whole major factor as to whether or not she'd get any ice time. Now here's Julia chasing down the puck. Ran into the linesman, still making the play. Capilano with one hand on the stick and one fending off the checker, almost able to steer that one toward the net. One to nothing, the Golden Eagles lead. There's a trip at center ice. And there's the whistle. Penalty coming up on Atlanta. They're going to call it a roughing call, not tripping. And so Salt Lake, with a one to nothing lead, will have the power play. Tim Berglund uh, was right out in the neutral zone, hooked him down. As you mentioned, they call the rough, although it could have been called hooking or tripping. Nevertheless, the Salt Lake man advantage comes up. So the Golden Eagles, with a one to nothing lead, will have the power play. And Atlanta, after a stellar first period in which they controlled the play and enjoyed a major power play advantage, as you can see, the penalty minutes favoring Atlanta, two to one. But at this point in time, it's Capuano, the guilty party, and they'll call it slashing. Got the stick up a little bit, at least in the opinion of Derek Martin, the referee. And so Salt Lake is on the power play for the next two minutes. Now Chernomaz feeds Hafey. Hafey had three power play goals last night. And Annette McCarthy. Now Hafey. Forsland at the point. Here's Wartman. He quickly fires and a dandy save. And Littman juggled the puck, but Derek Martin blew the whistle. I think from his angle, Martin thought it was in the glove. Big save by Littman. Yeah, good scoring chance for Salt Lake on the power play. Their second opportunity in the game. They've had only one previous. And Littman was able to make the stop coming back in after replacing Manon Rayom 549 
into the second period. Good scoring, Jen. Big story for Solik, the leading goal and point scorer. Uh, Patrick LeBeau is not in the lineup tonight. He was uh, ill earlier today and also hurt his foot. So for a couple of reasons, he's out of the lineup uh, for Salt Lake and a big scratch for them offensively. 14 goals, 16 assists, 30 points. LeBeau. Oh, well, they give up the puck and Julia trying to make a play. Short-handed the Knights with a chance. Julia bumped off the play by Forslund. Good play by Forslund, but the puck's still loose. Julia still playing it. Now it comes here to Wartman. He feeds Forslund, and Salt Lake heads up the rink. Just under a minute left on the power play, and offside is called at the blue line. Offside, Salt Lake. Well, the Golden Eagles Fantasy having a scoring chance in the power of play. And the captain, Rich Chernomaz, we will talk to him at the tail end of the period. He's approaching the franchise record in games played in points. Last year, he broke the franchise record set by Doug Palazzari, who played with the St. Louis Blues of the NHL and goals scored. So approaching the all-time games played in scoring championship, and that's set originally by Lyle Bradley, a longtime player in the Central League in the old Western Hockey League. Salt Lake bangs the puck in. A centering attempt taken away by the Knights, and they flip it into the crowd. You mentioned during the intermission we'll be chatting with Chernomaz. We also have a feature on Derek Martin, the referee. He's in the NHL training program, has been in the IHL for a few years, could break ground as the first black NHL referee, and we'll talk with him about that and a number of other things in a most interesting feature put together for the second intermission. Good referee. The main thing he does, he knows how to keep control of the game, and he plays it evenly. Blows the whistle or doesn't blow the whistle depending on the play of the game and the flow of the game. Born in Chicago, follow the Blackhawks growing up. And keeping tabs on this one right now. The Golden Eagles on the power play for another 30 seconds. St. Pierre. Stoke back to St. Pierre. He fires on a goal! I think that's Gillingham again on a deflection. If not, it belongs to St. Pierre, who got it between Littman and the post on the near side, and it's two to nothing, and the Golden Eagles, who have been struggling on the power play, have four power play goals now in their last two games. One of the few players from Newfoundland, Labrador City, and Gillingham's excited about it. He hopes his family is watching there on the satellite, but I'll tell you what, uh, I believe he deflected that as St. Pierre let go of the big drive. He was there, got a stick on it, I'm sure. In fact, that shot might have been going wide. Here we'll have another look. St. Pierre let it go, and I'm fairly sure he got that stick on it and beat him to the stick side. So give credit to Gillingham for the goal. And the puck is back in the Atlanta zone. The Golden Eagles with a 2-0 lead here. They lead the Atlanta Knights in the season series two games to one. And now Atlanta breaks to center. Julia across the line on side for Capuano. Stepped in by Osborne. Rolled in front. Trefanoff steers it back in front. Clear to center. During the halfway point of the hockey game. Ten and a half minutes to go in the second period. The Golden Eagles by a deuce. Capuano taken down, no call. Osborne to Rivers. He lets fly the wrist shot. Loose in front. Steered to the side by the defense and a penalty coming up. Another holding call. We'll have the penalty after we take this time out. The Golden Eagles have scored twice in the second period. This is the IHL on Prime. Ball late penalty called against number five, Kevin Miller. Mom, I'm tired. Please go home now. Two months ago, the only job this woman could take was one where she could take her son with her. What do you do when there's no one to watch him but you? She's getting help at a daycare center. They got help from the United Way. All because the United Way got help from you. The United Way. It brings out the best in all of us. If you've discovered that all you really need in life is just a little more. Discover the performance and handling of the all-new 1993 Toyota Corolla and discover Corolla again.
The Atlanta Knights are going back on the power play on this penalty. Well, Kevin Melrose just knocked Capuano flying to the ice in front of the Salt Lake net, held him prior to that, and then gave him a little glove sandwich to boot and picks up the holding penalty. Time of the infraction, 9.41, the sixth power play for Atlanta, and they are 0 for 5 in this game so far with the man advantage. Shots on goal, 23 to 8 in favor of the Knights, and believe it or not, they trail to zip. Well, the Knights have controlled the puck well on the power play, but have not uh, generated any scores at this point. Now Rivers to the far side. There's a booming shot. Save the rebound. Still loose in front. Clear to the side by the defense. Once again, the Atlanta Knights do everything but score the Salt Lake defense right there for their goaltender, Trefilov. Well, I think Trefilov was the first line of defense on the first shot, I believe, by Gretzky. Then they were able to clear it away in the second chance, but he made a dazzler on the initial shot into the Salt Lake zone. Now Gretzky's pass knocked wide and cleared by the defense. Shots on goal. Strongly favoring Atlanta, but as it is so often... The opportunities have gone to Salt Lake. Nice move by Lands away from a check. Got Gretzky on his left. Now Rivers to Gretzky to Lands. Stevenson in front of the net. Hodge behind the net and it's passed to the point. Nobody home. And the Atlanta fans react negatively. Reloads the gun from the safety of his own net. And Rivers. There's a long one off the glass. Shuffle off. Steers it all the way down. He's made 24 saves to this point and twice has cleared it all the way down. He acts as a third defenseman in his goal crease. 23 seconds left on the manpower advantage and the Knights misplay the puck again. Now LaPuma with Harris who takes the puck away. Cernamaz in Boston. Check that Hafey in Boston. And now Campuano. Five seconds on the power play. Campuano. Far point in La Puma. A low wrist shot. Off the backboard. Roll right in front. Osborne tied up. Couldn't play the puck. The penalty is over. Teams are back at five on five. The shot wide. Top to center, and now here's a one-on-one -on -one for Harris. With Lacuma to beat. Lacuma takes him down, no penalty. And the puck cleared by Capuano. Too far on his pass. Intercepted by Spruce. The Golden Eagles jump it in. Penalty coming up here as Littman got hit. Gillingham was behind the play. He hit Littman. He's going off. And to the defense of the goaltender, there go the Atlanta Knights. There could be more penalties coming up here. No question, Gillingham just ran over Littman as he came out of his goal crease area. You know, it's funny, uh, they have talked about if Manon Rayom came in with the players run her, nobody talked about Littman, but Gillingham came charging in like a freight train to the side of the goal as Littman went to play the puck. Now, Littman kind of made a move back in toward Gillingham to make sure he couldn't play the puck, and Gillingham just kind of let him have it. And now LaPuma is going off. I think he's going to get a roughing penalty. There's going to be a cross-check, I'm sure, on Gillingham here in period two. We'll check all the penalties out when we come back. It's 2 to nothing, Salt Lake City at the Omni. This is the IHL on Prime. Wake up with Nesson Sports Desk, the morning edition, and you'll get it all. All the scores, all the highlights, and all the news. Brian Sutter's boys are in the midst of battling for the top spot in the Adams as they face off against their division rivals. Sports Desk will carry those highlights. Rookie wonders from Scott Zolak have brightened the outlook in Foxborough. We'll follow the Pats and the rest of the gridiron action. And the Celtics look to rebound from their slow start. We'll keep you up to date on dealings on and off the court. Catch it all on Nesson Sports Desk, the morning edition. It's always exciting, it's always fun, it's Hockey East and it's on the run. So bring some friends, or come alone, nah, get a date, get on the phone. It's college hockey, the best game in town. So get your tickets and cheer them on. 
Tickets are now on sale at the ticket office of your favorite team for UMass Lowell, 934-2335, or for Merrimack, 837-5341. Back at the Omni with Mike Barrick, Ken Double with you, and here's another look. There's the roughing, and then LaPuma, boom, there's the cross check. We got two players in the penalty box. It would have been a power play for the Knights instead, four on four, because of that extra penalty called against LaPuma, who gets the cross check in the teams at even strength. Face off in the neutral zone, Struch and Lafreniere. Lafreniere in the white jersey for Atlanta wins the draw from center ice. The Golden Eagles fire it in. A lot of room on the rink. We're four on four in front of the goaltenders again. The Puma sitting for, I believe, his third penalty. He's found the penalty box a little too much to his liking tonight to suit Gene Ubriaco. Now it's an offside across the line. Lisa Lett rule just ahead of the puck a little bit. He picked up a game misconduct in the game Saturday. As you mentioned, three minors for the Puma in this game. And uh, he's played the very physical style on defense. Gene Ubriaco talking things over with Derek Martin and pleading with him about that last play. Can't believe that it's an even strength situation after Gillingham knocked down Lippman in his, his side of the goal. Now the face-off in the neutral zone. Buchanan to Vince Solette and the Knights retreating to set up shop. Dan Vince Solette has played with Chicago and Quebec, as we mentioned now in the Philadelphia organization, but remaining here in Atlanta until Philly decides exactly what to do. Their Hershey Farm Club is loaded. They've got four or five players sitting now. Now Stolt dodges the check from Lafreniere. Into the center, and here's the captain, Rich Turnamon. Six save by Littman. Back the other way, taken away by Wartman. He's got Turnamon's right in front, and Rivers intercepts the play. Big defensive stop there by Rivers. Now Vincelette pushes it in. And Melrose plays the puck. Leaves it behind the net, Vinny. Boy, he was tired after that shift, just fell down. It was a long shift for him, and now it's getting off in a line change. Well, there might be some concern on the Atlanta bench. He had knee surgery and is coming back. Injured his knee earlier this year, and the way he got up went down and then slowly got up. There might have been a little concern that maybe he had hurt the knee again, but I think you're right. I think it was just poop. Now Boston beats Stevenson flying up the wing of blast, and he just missed the post. A rebound! Shot by Osborne over the crossbar. Now Stevenson has it. Stevenson looking for the play. Stevenson. Osborne manhandled in front of player. Pushed into the cage. Yeah, no no gave, penalty called here. No oh gave Stevenson a shot to the right of the goal. A ninth had a couple of players in the slot area, but it was... Uh, uh, Stevenson, who gets up slowly now to the right of the net, punching himself there. Melrose didn't like him taking position to the right of the solo goal and let him know it. But as you mentioned, Martin, let it go. 5.42 left to go here in the second period. And we're coming back for more hockey from the Omni. The Golden Eagles still leading 2-0. This is the IHL on Prime. Leadership report to the Knights customer service. 1849, the year of the California Gold Rush. 1849, the year Schlitz began brewing beer. The gold rush left California with 273 ghost towns. Schlitz brought fame to a little Wisconsin town named Milwaukee. Since that time, many have searched in vain for gold, while the truly fortunate have always known where to find it. There are two ways to put a movie theater in your home. You could build one. Oh. Or you could simply buy the giant 35-inch RCA home theater with SRS sound. It's the easiest way to get a movie theater in your home. 
This telecast is the property of Prime Network and the International Hockey League. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the expressed written consent of Prime Network or the IHL is prohibited. With Mike Barrick, Ken Double back at the Omni. Wild activity behind the Salt Lake net. Well, the Knights Stevenson had possession being held to the right of the Salt Lake goal. The puck was centered. The net was dislodged as Melrose gave Stevenson a shot. Not only knocked off Stevenson, but the net ins, uh, itself and the treffle off outside the goal crease. Looked like a twister game in front of the goal. Not only that, Kevin Guy had Osborne all wrapped up. A lot of activity off the faceoff. A shot by Boston deflected wide. Now Osborne. Holding all over him, Capuano throws it in front. Had his stick all tied up, almost tried to kick it into the net. That would not have counted. Trefilov hangs on, the whistle, and another faceoff coming up. Trefilov, as usual, his acrobatic, sensational self. He's faced 25 shots and stopped them all, and this one from close range in a good glove save for him. He was the backup for Mikhail Stalinkov on the Olympic team last year for the CIS team that won the gold medal. Imagine the backup. And he played four games in the Olympics, but in the gold medal game, Stalinkov was in net, and Truffalov uh, was watching the match at the gold medal to his credit. Clark put a hit on Boston back there, and the Knights clear to center. He was part of a Moscow Dynamo team as well that won a championship in the Soviet Elite League. Dynamo is right. Loose at center ice. Steered back into the Atlanta zone. Boston pumped again. Salt Lake definitely with the momentum in this second period. After a scoreless first period, they've scored twice and have spent a lot more time in the Atlanta zone than they did in the first 20 minutes. Nice move here by Wartman, who did everything but score, fired it wide, and then the rebound popped up over the glass. What a move by Wartman. So Wartman has tremendous moves. He's a very offensive defenseman. He was able to make one, and unfortunately for him and the Golden Eagles, uh, not able to put it home, but a uh, scramble in front of the net, as you mentioned, kind of a whirly do girly, whirling dervish type of thing. Looked a uh, Dennis Savard on that particular play. He went from his backhand to his forehand, then let the shot go, and it was deflected wide. David Littman, out of Boston College, native of Cranston, Rhode Island, 25 years old. Would like to try his hand at broadcasting or acting. Has uh, done a little bit of that, not a lot. Good looking, kid. There's a shot fired by Stilk, never got to the goaltender. Now a bouncing puck here by Atlanta. John Bluin leaves it here for Hodge. Tied up with Stolt. And the Knights dump it in. Around to the near side. Out of the far side. Atlanta forechecking. Hodge leaves it in the corner for Bluin. Tied up with Wartman. Taking for the puck. Oh, Bergman takes a big bump from behind. That was some check by McCarthy. Now the Knights have the puck, but it's cleared to center. Face for the puck. Good job down there by Nicholas. And Lippman hangs on. And... No, uh, no fisticuffs, no problem there. Bob Francis, the coach of the Golden Eagles. Quietly surveying the scene at this point. Got to be happy on this final leg of the road trip that his team is leading. And I'll guarantee you he's hoping this game gets over with in regulation time because they have a flight out of here at 10.40 tonight to get back to Salt Lake. Faceoff coming in the Atlanta zone. Puck won by the Knights. Harris lost his skates. And now lands from the red line, dumps it in. Trefilov leaves it for the defense. Battle along the near boards. Now Lafreniere with it. To the far point in the rivers. Around Harris. Rolls it in front. Penalty coming up on Salt Lake. Lafreniere. Vince Gillette, it's played by the Golden Eagles, and the holding call coming up 
The Atlanta Knights are going back on the power play. It'll be their seventh power play opportunity of the hockey game. Kevin Melrose, number five, going to the penalty box. Melrose, the 26-year-old defenseman, takes the holding call at 16.54 of the second period. So the Knights, right here at the end of the period with just 3.06 left, have an opportunity to try and get on the scoreboard. They have now played almost eight periods of hockey against Trepilov and have scored only two goals. And at this point, 0 for 6 on the power play tonight. Now the Knights play to the far corner. Osborne and Guy. Drulia comes in to make the play, number 20. Jump by Guy. Now Osborne with it. Try to get it to Hodge. Off a skate, it's played by Trulia. He falls down. Now he gets up as he plays the puck here to Capuano. Guy digging after the puck. Now it goes to the far point and Hodge. Now Trulia from a tough angle. The puck bouncing into the slot. Played by Lands. Oh, right in front was Osborne. The pass deflected on a good play defensively. Now it's played to the point, kept in by Hodge. Here's Lands. Julia moving to the front of the net. Here's Capuano. Back to Lands, a one-timer. Fired it wide. Forslund waits and clears the zone. 54 seconds left on the power play opportunity for Atlanta. We're just under two minutes left in the second period. Two to nothing. The Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights. Lafreniere loses off the skate right in front. Here miss for Struess as he missed the near post. Now Lafreniere with Struess tying him up. Puck tipped here to Lands. Stevenson loses the puck and Struess dumps it ahead with now 22 seconds left on the power play. Now Lands. Lafreniere. Across the line, Lafreniere. Tied up. The puck jammed loose from the corner, and as it goes on net, Trefilov jumps out. Just three seconds left on that power play. Melrose will be out of the box right after this faceoff. Stay with us during the second intermission. We'll chat with Rich Chernomaz of the Salt Lake City Golden Eagles. We'll also have that feature on Derek Martin, the referee. And then third period hockey coming up after that. A front of the air to take the draw with Hafey. Hafey wins the faceoff, but the Knights play the puck in the far corner. Right in front! Stevenson couldn't get a stick on the centering pass. Here's by Wartman off the glass to center with exactly a minute left in the period. And the Knights fire it back in. Fans on his clearing pass. Rolls it up the near side. And Harris with Hafey and Nicola. Played by Atlanta. Stevenson across the line for Vincelet. Vinny goes into the board. Takes a player with him. Nicola follows up and jams Vinny into the glass. Penalty coming up. The penalty coming up on Atlanta. There's the whistle as Nicola and Vincelet are going in. They both have the arm free, Nicola. One tough cookie, and Vinny, no stranger to this kind of activity. Nicola trying to lift Vinny off the ice by the pants, almost got it done. Now the linesmen step in. And they separate the combatants. And Nicola and Vincelet will head to the penalty boxes. I believe there will be an extra two minutes assessed here in that the penalty was coming up on the Atlanta Knights before the fight broke out. Vinny headed to the locker room. Discussion at the scorer's table and the penalty box. As Derek Martin hands out the penalties. 
Take another look at it here as Vince Sillette takes the pop right there from Nikolic after he put Wartman to the rink in the chase for the puck. Now Martin is explaining to uh, Lafreniere and Harris what the penalties are. There you see Nikolic in the penalty box. A tough cookie out of Sudbury, Ontario. Big kid, as you can see, 215 pounds. 35 minutes in penalties so far coming into this game as Bob Francis now talks about... Talks about his strategy. There's another look at it again. Vince Ouellette is going to take two minutes for a high sticking and a five-minute fighting penalty. Nikolic will take five minutes for fighting. The penalty's coming up at the 19.35 mark, just 25 seconds left here in the second period. So this means that the Knights will be shorthanded for two minutes. If the Golden Eagles do not score, this power play will carry over into the third period. Gino Briaco in Atlanta sends out Lafreniere and Berglund, the forwards on the penalty killing line, with Lapuma and Buchanan on the back line. The power play unit centered by Hafey for the Golden Eagles. They also have McCarthy and Forsland as the forwards. Now, Derek Martin indicating that we've got to have play resume. Instead, we have to get an Atlanta Knight player to serve the penalty minutes. And at this point in time, it'll be Keith Osborne heading to the penalty box. He will serve the penalty as Vince Allette on the fighting call has gone to the locker room. Off the draw, the Knights get an opportunity to shot from the far point by Lapuma. Good blocker save by Trefalon. Now Hafey with 12 seconds left in the period. There you see the time remaining in the second period. The Golden Eagles dump it in. Buchanan takes the bump. A guy fires right at the horn. It's wide and the period is over. Second period goals for Salt Lake. A little more pushing and shoving in front of the Atlanta net. Cooler heads, I think, will prevail here. Get these teams to their respective locker rooms and get ready for third period action. But two second period goals for the Atlanta Knights. And indeed, an interesting second period that saw Mano Rayon make her IHL debut. Not spectacular by any means, but nonetheless, she got her first minutes of action and gets a fine response from the crowd as she heads to the locker room. It's two to nothing, Salt Lake City, after 40 minutes of play. You're watching hockey from the Omni, IHL hockey on the Prime Network. We're coming right back. This is the medal Schlitz just won at the Great American Beer Festival. Schlitz won Best American Lager Beer, beating several major brands. We're proud of this medal, but we're even more proud of the quality and great taste of Schlitz beer. So choose what the judges at the Great American Beer Festival chose. Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. 1849, the year of the California Gold Rush. 1849, the year Schlitz began brewing beer. The gold rush left California with 273 ghost towns. Schlitz brought fame to a little Wisconsin town named Milwaukee. Since that time, many have searched in vain for gold, while the truly fortunate have always known where to find it. Fire is one of your home's worst enemies. That's why homeowners across America are choosing American Samwood for Class A Fire Safe roofing products. A patented process combines wood fiber and cement into a unique roofing product that is lightweight and beautiful. An American Samwood roof will not only enhance the value and appearance of your home, it also protects it. In fact, it has a 50-year warranty. For the beauty of wood and the fire protection of cement, call American Samwood today. 
if you hang out with America's top builders, you'll see they rely on Makita high torque tools. Corded or cordless, Makita's got the torque to power its way through anything. And with service centers from coast to coast, you'll never get caught with your tools down. At Makita, you've got the tools to get the job done. Makita, it's all the power you need. Back at the Omni, Ken Double with you. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights 2 to nothing. We're in our second intermission, and we're going down to Mike Barrick, who's got the Salt Lake captain, Rich Chernomaz, with him. Mike? Well, Rich Chernomaz is probably a little bit happy because his team has a, having a 2 to nothing lead at the end of 40 minutes of play. And Rich, uh, Manon Rayom, the big story. It was scoreless after one. She came in. What was the reaction of the Salt Lake players in regards to her coming in net? Well, I think, uh, you know, the guys, uh, you know, we talked about in the dressing we only got three shots the first period and uh and our reaction was we're going to make sure we get the, get some shots and get them on net and uh you know we uh scored one that they disallowed on the second shot that she had so you know it was a good indication and then ty gilliam came out of the box scored on a nice goal so uh i got us going a little bit and then we got a second one now we just got to come out play strong sir play good defensively and uh keep getting some good shots i'm with rich turnaman as a salt lake captain and rich was there a, a book on manon rayom and the guys talk about what to do when she came in net well, it's like I said, Mike, you know, guys want to make sure they're driving in the net, try and create some rebounds and some loose openings for us to create some opportunities for us. I'm sure she was a little nervous in that tonight, but, uh, you know, she didn't stay in there long, and, uh, you know, I hope in the future she gets another opportunity. 26 to 11, the shots on goal in the hockey game so far. Andre Trefiloff have stopped them all. What do you think about the Salt Lake goaltender? Well, you know, we talked and uh, regrouped in the first period, and guys said, we, you know, we got to come out and play a lot stronger effort and uh, not depend on Andre so much. You know, he's played one of his uh, regular outstanding games again, and, uh, you know, when you make save after save like that, it, it, it does nothing but help the guys uh, start producing a little better uh, offensively and defensively out there, and I think the second period indicated that a little bit and now we just got to go out and play the same way in the third. Rich, this is your sixth season in Salt Lake. You're the captain and uh, last season set the franchise record for goals scored this season, perhaps games played and also overall scoring from Lyle Bradley. You've been in Salt Lake six years. You've seen the progression of the IHO. What do you think about this league right now? What's going on? Well, Mike, I think every year the league just seems to get stronger and uh, seems to be a bigger market out there for it. I, I think it's become really world class now with some of the players that we're getting from from Europe and uh, I just see this thing getting bigger and better uh, as years goes on and uh, it's a real good product for the people to come out and watch. All right Rich, best of luck to you and the Eagles the rest of the way. Great, thanks Mike. Rich Turnaman is captain of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. The score is two to nothing in favor of the Atlanta Knights. A reel off NBA action. A four star basketball show with a jamming lineup. For the history buff, a stroll down memory lane. I have a check field. For the inquiring mind, the up close and personal. I'm a bad dog. And for you basketball aficionados, start counting the play. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. All in NBA action. Catch the action tomorrow night at 6 30 on Nesson. For the best in fresh and saltwater fishing, tune in each week to Jim Baugh's American Angler. We'll show you some of America's top fishing holes, as well as great tips on travel and cooking. So join us each week as we take you on the most beautiful angling adventures in America. That's Jim Baugh's American Angler. Wednesdays at 5.30 on Nesson, your ticket to the great outdoors. The best of the Big East comes your way every Thursday night at 6.30 on Nesson. You'll see all the big hits, the great grabs, and the shifty moves from the nation's newest and most exciting college football league. So tune in to This Week in the Big East, Thursday night at 6.30 on Nesson. Your ticket to Big East football. 
Bruins fans, if you really want to keep up with the big bad bees, you'll need to tune in to Bruins Weekly every Friday night right here on Nesson. We'll let you know who's hot and who's not for first-year head coach Brian Sutter. So join Amy Stone Fridays at 6 as she keeps you up to date with all of the comings and the goings of New England's favorite hockey team. The celebrations are just beginning on Causeway Street. So tune to Bruins Weekly Friday nights at 6 on Nesson. We're back at the Omni. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights 2 to nothing. And during the second intermission, they're honoring the Atlanta Flames. And there you see Bernie Boom Boom Jeffrey on, their first coach here with the Flames. And a number of the players, Tom Lysiak and Mike Vale and uh, so many others, uh, still live in the area. Kurt Bennett, a former Flame, is uh, an assistant coach with the Atlanta Knights, as well as a successful businessman. There's uh, Lysiak, a 50-goal scorer in his career in the National Hockey League, now with Atlanta, but in uh, his day. And uh, so many of the fans here so in love with their Atlanta Flames and so disappointed when they moved in 1980 to Calgary. And they still have fond memories of that bunch and a nice ceremony here in the Omni for those fellas who got their own Atlanta Knights jerseys. Now we're going to have an interesting feature for you as uh, we take a look at a day in the night, uh, uh, I should say a day in the life of a referee. And this is Derek Martin, who might be the first black NHL referee in history. Tomahawk chop. I don't have a puck. Well, you got the hat on, man. I don't have the hat on. I don't have a puck. He's the, he's the puck man. He's the puck man. Stop running for mayor. Let's go. Team's out here. Hey, listen, you want to listen? Don't point your finger at me. Listen, Gene, I didn't see anything over there, okay? Clarky, that's it. Capo, let's go. He's in the box already. I don't think uh, the race issue is, is a, a problem here in the in, in hockey, so to speak. I think it's more of a hockey's, I shouldn't say a Canadian sport, but it's dominated more by Canadians where uh, black, white issue in, the, in Canada is, is, is originally not an issue. It's an issue here in the United States. I think I've, I receive more problems from fans where I went into some towns when I'm paying my dues coming up the, the Meyer Leagues and before that where I, was, I thought I was the back black population of the town when I arrived. So uh, most people, when, when I go into that setting, they're not used to seeing a black period, and then they see a black in authority, and they have a hard time with that. Maybe hockey is a little bit better than maybe the rest of society, where they're more accepting. If you have the ability to, to play the sport, officiate the sport, coach the sport, you're getting the opportunity. And whoever has the, the ability to succeed will. If you don't, then you will drop out. We have a tremendous growth of hockey throughout all of North America, all the leagues sprouting up and the, the amount of attendance that has taken place. And if we can get more exposure on national TV, ESPN, ABC, Prime Network, we can uh, expose the sport to a v vast variety of people. And once people see the sport of hockey, I can't believe that they won't be hooked on it. IHL veteran referee Derek Martin, who is undoubtedly headed to the NHL as an official, an outstanding referee here, and has been for a long time. We're in our second intermission. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights 2 to nothing, and we will be back with statistics and more after we take this timeout. This is the IHL on Prime.
I don't think he's from around here. Strings. Branford Marsalis on the horn. Paul Schaefer on keys. Carly Simon on lead. There are a lot of different parts to play in the American Red Cross. Play your part. If you hang out with America's top builders, you'll see they rely on Makita high torque tools. Corded or cordless, Makita's got the torque to power its way through anything. And with service centers from coast to coast, you'll never get caught with your tools down. At Makita, you've got the tools to get the job done. Makita, it's all the power you need. Should be. We're back at the Omni with Mike Barrick. This is Ken Double. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights 2 to nothing after the first two periods of play. And I'll apologize to Mike Vale, the baseball player. It's Eric Vale who used to play hockey here with the Atlanta Flames. Here's Gillingham coming right out of the penalty box, and he gets the puck and scores, makes it one to nothing. Yeah, he was uh, able to get down the left wing side in the first ever goal scored against Manon Rayom in professional hockey, and Boomy let it fly as he was uh, working into that Atlanta goal. Tough break for Manon Rayom, who was able to. Uh, clear the, uh, unable to clear the puck. Uh, outside of that, she made a couple of stops, and her debut was not a disaster by any means. So Gillingham scores the first goal, and then he gets the deflection and scores the second goal. David St. Pierre let go of the slapper, and Gillingham got his stick up and deflected it home behind David Littman, and they scored two to nothing at the end of the second period. Todd Gillingham with both scoring plays for Salt Lake, a free agent signed by the Flames in 1991. Last year played in St. John's is uh, very close to his hometown in Newfoundland and scores a couple here and the Golden Eagles have the two to nothing lead at the end of 40 minutes of play. Interesting they get the offense from him. He only had three goals coming into the game all season. Known more for his rough tough play but he got the job done here in the second period for the Golden Eagles to give them the two to nothing lead. And uh, it'll be their nightmare only if the Knights can come back in the third period. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. And they've done a great job on uh, the marketing here in Atlanta and use that nickname to their advantage with the goaltender, the Atlanta Knights with the mask. And uh, they've done a gr terrific job, a great crowd here tonight uh, for this uh, International Hockey League game. And what's interesting tonight, uh, Ken, is the fact that the shots on goal clearly in favor of Atlanta, the 26 to 11 opportunities. And Trefiloff has been terrific, uh, making 26 saves. And the fans really enjoying it here in Atlanta, 26 to 11 overall, 2-0 Salt Lake. And, of course, uh, coming into the third period, the goaltender, Truffleoff, with 26 saves. The power play is clearly an advantage of Atlanta as far as the opportunities, but the Eagles' penalty killing has been perfect. So when we come back, we'll have third period action and more as the IHL is being brought to you on the Prime Network. We'll be back after this timeout. Stay with Nesson this coming Saturday when we showcase the Boston Bruins of tomorrow. Today with more exciting Providence Bruins AHL action. Providence Bees are one of the American Hockey League's hottest teams right now. You can see them in action Saturday night when they take on the Binghamton Rangers. It's a great night of hockey you won't want to miss. Saturday night at 10 following the Boston Bruins, it's the Providence Bruins on the road against the Binghamton Rangers right here on Nesson. Inside to the Stars with a Sharp Sports interview hosted by Ann Liguri. Sunday at 5 on Nesson, your ticket to the best in sports. The return of the Causeway Crusaders. Will Brian Sutter mastermind another banner year? Will Joe A. Juno continue to be more than your average Joe? 
Will we ever learn to pronounce this guy's name? Stay tuned. Same Bruins coverage, same Bruins channel. We're back at the Omni, and we'll be back on television on most Prime affiliates next Friday, December the 19th. Cleveland takes on Cincinnati in the... Uh, check that. That's Saturday. I'm sorry. December the 19th is Saturday, not Friday. Thank Getting corrected in the truck. Thanks, guys. Don't sit here with a calendar right in front of me. <laughs> anyway, it's Saturday. And uh, what's interesting there is the Atlanta Knights play in the Atlantic Division of the Eastern Conference. And these are their two division rivals, Cleveland and Cincinnati. And the standings mean that this is an important game for Cincinnati. They've been struggling a little bit. And uh, neither of the teams with a winning record at this point. But Cincinnati, that would be a couple of big points for them in trying to chase Cleveland. Fort Wayne, as we said at the top of the telecast, they've been hot. Indianapolis has been kind of hot and cold. Indianapolis has been struggling on their home ice, and Kalamazoo has also been struggling somewhat this year. There you have a look at the Eastern Conference standings. Right now, Atlanta and Fort Wayne, the strong teams. Milwaukee and San Diego have been strong all year, and that's San Diego. That's an unbelievable story. At one point, they were 22-0-3. It took... 25 games into the year before Phoenix finally got them in 60 minutes of regulation time. 62, the Roadrunners won that game, and it's incredible. Uh, uh, 17 players, I believe, with the National Hockey League experience on that hockey team coached by Rick Dudley, and they have been beating up on everybody this season in the International League, and Milwaukee in first place in the Midwest, both independent teams in the IHL. As you look at the standings, unlike the National Hockey League, OTL, there are no ties in this league. That's overtime losses. At the end of regulation, if the teams are tied, each team gets one point. They play a five-minute overtime to award a winner the second point. If it's still tied after overtime, they have that incredible shootout to again award the second point. So there are no ties in the IHL, and that's what the overtime loss column means. That means one point awarded for the overtime loss, two points for the team that eventually wins either in overtime or in the shootout. That's what makes San Diego's record so impressive is the fact that in their uh, 28 games this year, 27 have gone uh, either when they've had the lead and won the game or gone into an overtime situation, Ken. So that's a, a real interesting statistic uh, considering the number of games they've at least gained a point. And the uh, Knights have been all over Salt Lake as far as the shots on goal, and Trafaloff has faced 26 shots and stopped them all. He's been incredible. We talked about it from the top. He's very unorthodox. He split. We saw him uh, in Salt Lake City. He did the splits and went down at about the time a player wound up for a slap shot and then threw his glove high and made the save when he really didn't need to go down at all. Completely unorthodox, but again, it all adds up to spectacular numbers, a great one-loss record, a great goals against, and he's working on a shutout here. 52 saves in one game this season against the Milwaukee Admirals and a 2-1 to one victory over the Milwaukee team at the Delta Center in Salt Lake, and he spent a year and four months without playing hockey at all, Ken. He played uh, hockey, of course, at uh, the Soviet Elite League with Moscow Dynamo, but actually spent a year and four months without playing hockey, serving his time in the Russian Army. He has yet to score a shutout this year in IHL play as you see the Atlanta Knights come back out onto the rink. But he's working on it here at 20 minutes away from his first blanking of an opponent. Now as we start this third period, the Atlanta Knights will be completing a penalty, a minute 20, a minute 36 rather, to be served on the penalty to Dan Vincelet. So the Atlanta Knights will be shorthanded. Salt Lake will have that opportunity to increase the lead. I've heard a lot of coaches talk, Mike, about the fact that the most dangerous lead in hockey is a two-goal lead. There is sometimes the uh, desire to not so much relax, but to begin playing a little too defensively, not to uh, uh, attack quite as much, and that the next goal becomes so important it either creates the three-goal lead or allows the trailing team to get a little momentum and get back into it. Well, for Salt Lake, they have not blown a lead this year. They have a record of 12-0-1 when leading or tied at the end of 40 minutes of play, and they obviously have done very well when leading, and the Knights went trailing after two. Not bad. Four comeback victories for them, four and five, when trailing through two, so you have a team that's very good at protecting the league against a team that's very good at coming back in the Atlanta Knights. 
There you see David Littman. Menno Rayom back to the bench after her near six-minute run of it during the second period. She's been a spectacular story. She's just delightful. Uh, still struggling a little bit with her English, and yet she's uh, been under the microscope as uh, only the media can provide it and handled it all very well. She's also, as you can imagine, uh, much in demand for uh, different uh, endorsements and things. You touched on it earlier. She looks good for the camera, and she said it takes her an hour to get ready, just like all the other girls. <laughs> Out of Quebec. She made quite a splash on the David Letterman show, and she talked about the fact that Aki is my passion. Yes, no question about it. From Quebec City, she idolized Daniel Bouchard, who played goal here in Atlanta with the Atlanta Flames and also with the Quebec Nordiques. We're underway. The teams have changed ends again, and the Knights, shorthanded, clear the zone. Atlanta in the white jerseys, moving offensively to the left. The Golden Eagles with the lead and the puck. And the manpower advantage for another one minute and four seconds. Moving offensively to the right, centered behind the net. High up in the far corner, Buchanan number two. Leaves it for Berglund. He takes a bump on the near side. Gillingham takes a check on the near side, and the puck is sent all the way down by the Knights. Unbelievable truffle off outside the blue line there, and I believe a delayed penalty coming up against Atlanta. Atlanta getting a penalty indeed, and there's a quick shot and a save as Trefiloff played the puck clear up beyond the blue line and then went to the bench. I remember uh, Glenn Hall used to do that occasionally, would try and pick up an assist to Eddie Jackman, did it tremendously for the New York Rangers, but Trefiloff a little dipsy doodle there into the neutral zone on that uh, last possession. And Buchanan, it's two minutes for roughing, and now as the Atlanta Knights had the two-man advantage for a while in the first period, the Golden Eagles will get a two-man advantage here in the third period for 34 seconds. That's what remains on the Vincelette penalty. And now Buchanan for slashing at the 102 mark here in the third period. And so the Knights will be down two men. While the Eagles already have the two to nothing lead and have a great opportunity to build on that here with the two-man power of play. And uh, we'll see uh, how the Knights do in that uh, penalty killing situation. They have uh, up front for the Atlanta hockey team, uh, Lafreniere will uh, drop, and he'll be the only forward on this penalty kill. Lands and also Rivers on the back line. Let's also mention that Vince Lett will have to sit an additional five minutes for his fighting penalty. It'll be Osborne to come out of the box in another 25 seconds. Now, Wharton has a little room, just missed the far post. Hafey with it. Wharton, back to Hafey. Wartman again deflected and a skate save and a dandy by Littman. And Lafreniere clears it. There are seven seconds on the first penalty. A minute and a half on the second penalty. Forsland. Here's Wartman, a lot of room, a shot and a save, a dandy by the goaltender. And out of the penalty box, Osborne all alone. Skates it down in the corner, spins it around the near side, had no angle on Trefilov. And now the Golden Eagles. Oh, a near miss for the Knights on that one. As they just missed the connection with Osborne coming out of the box. And they clear the zone. I think the ice uh, coming off to the start of the period, the puck rolled on him a little bit. And had he been able to hold on to it, then he would have had that breakaway. Now St. Pierre around Le or, uh, La Puma. Golden Eagles keep it alive. Collision on the near side, and Lacoma over to clear the zone. Now across the line, Berglund spins away from the check, ragging a little time with 30 seconds left on the manpower advantage for the Golden Eagle. Now Stolp feeds it up the far side, and St. Pierre dumps it in. Littman feeds it up the far side. Ten seconds left on the power play. And the Knights clear to center. Now Guy has to wait for his teammates to get onside. He does. Littman gloves it. Boston plays it. Dangerously in front of his own net. 
Intercepted by St. Pierre. Great job by the Knights. They didn't really allow too many scoring chances on that two-man power play, and they're able to kill them off. Still two to nothing, Golden Eagles. Here's Osborne with a three-on-three -three rush. Stevenson cutting in. Stevenson whipped around and a penalty coming up. The Knights will have a power play. Stevenson getting around the defense on his way to the net. Ripped down to the ice. And when we come back, we'll have power play hockey for the Atlanta Knights. It's 2 to nothing Salt Lake. And this is the IHL on the Prime Network. Who's getting happy? Fire is one of your home's worst enemies. That's why homeowners across America are choosing American Samwood for Class A fire-safe roofing products. A patented process combines wood fiber and cement into a unique roofing product that is lightweight and beautiful. An American Samwood roof will not only enhance the value and appearance of your home, it also protects it. In fact, it has a 50-year warranty. For the beauty of wood and the fire protection of cement, call American Samwood today. Shane Stevenson, number 19, demonstrating those wheels here. Kevin Melrose had no other choice but to haul him down to the right of the goal. Melrose out of Harvard, played for an NCAA championship uh, team there as the pass was made across Stevenson on his backhand, and Melrose did the only thing he could, I guess, to keep him from scoring the goal and made him pay for it, but Melrose pays for it with a minor penalty. So Melrose sits two minutes for holding. At the 325 mark into the third period, the Knights are on the power play. 0 for 7 so far tonight. Third in the league at 22% plus. They were 2 for 7 in yesterday's game. And really, if they want to get back into the hockey game, this is their opportunity to cash in. Trying to feed it in front. Trulia had it knocked down by the defense. Now Osborne, the league's leading goal scorer, feeds Trulia. The Knights, again, all season long, have not just peppered the net with shots. It has been their plan and their play to move the puck around. Early on, they were spectacular behind the net. They feed lands. Early on, they were very successful, near 30% for the first 10 or 11 games. And as it has all around the league, San Diego has even settled down to where they're around 25% on the power play. Here's Capuano. Dave Capuano, he's got a brother, Jack, who plays hockey. Another cousin who plays hockey. Lands, fires it too high. Hodge, rolled it in front, deflected by the defense. And now Turnamaz sends it all the way down. Just missed connecting with Struth on that play. The Eagles playing a tight box. Both times in the Salt Lake defensive zone, the Knights kept the puck in the perimeter, but not able to get a slot shot in front of Truffleoff or even one from the point. Now Hodge. He can fire the puck, and he won't hesitate if he finds the opener. Stevenson, far circle. Gretzky with the puck. He's been quiet tonight after two good offensive games in a row. Stevenson, Gretzky right in front. Shot, save, and Lafreniere had the puck. Couldn't really tee it up. Threw it on net in a hurry, but Trefilov had the stick on the ice and then smothered it. Minute 32 gone into the penalty. Trefilov makes the save of the first tight shot can on that power play. The Knights were frustrated. They were passing the puck beautifully on the perimeter. That was their first close-in shot on that power play, and it was set up to the left of the goal. Gretzky waited no time at all to feed Lafreniere right in front, and Jason fired it right away, but again, the book on Trefilov is shoot the puck high, but no time to really tee it up at all. There's a high shot from Rivers and a good glove save by Trefilov. Well, I'm not sure if shooting high is necessarily the best, especially in his glove side, because that's his strength as well. I guess if they're going to beat him high, they're going to beat him above the shoulder on the short side, but I'll tell you what, he's uh, pretty strong with that glove hand on the high shots as well. Young goalie is just outstanding, and of course, 
as the voice of Salt Lake. Mike, you're around him a lot. What a colorful young fella he is. He's great. I'll tell you what, his uh, English is not great, but uh, he's learning. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's just a great guy. The, the, the players love to be around him, and they've really banded around him as well. Doesn't call you Mike Barrick. He calls you Mike Radio. Misha Radio, Misha <laughs> TV today. <laughs> Rivers. Away from a check by Brost. The pass too far for Gretzky. And now the penalty is over. The teams are back at five on five. The Golden Eagles have again thwarted the Knights on the power play for the eighth time. Salt Lake has played a much stronger game here tonight than they did yesterday. And again, evidence as to why they've been so much better over the last two, three weeks of the season. Flying into the attack zone. Oh, Clark would have been open in front. They couldn't get the puck to him. Atlanta the other way. Too far for Stevenson. Played at center ice by Gretzky. Cute move right through Struis. Has to wait to get his teammates on side. Taking down. There'll be a penalty on the Golden Eagles. They touch the puck, and here's the call. Now Gretzky, very upset. Took a pop. I think that's Gillingham. Yeah, he was leveled in across the line, and wow, the puck went into the corner, and another power play coming up for Atlanta. Now, there may be another penalty assessed here, though. The linesman in there, Gillingham, yeah. none too happy at all. Gretzky smiling, although he smiles all the time. Yeah, Kerry Clark popped him. Uh, Ross Chatcher sure. behind. Yep, yep, and uh, as a result, uh, another power play coming oh, up for Atlanta. Oh, and then Gillingham really tackled him good. Your attention, Salt Lake. Well, he saw the first one, and Clark's uh, being called off right now. Okay, we'll take a pause here and have this power play when we come back. It's 2-0 to nothing, the Golden Eagles. This is the IHL on Prime. Salt Lake cross-checking at 5.57. Two months ago, the only job this woman could take was one where she could take her son with her. What do you do when there's no one to watch him but you? She's getting help at a daycare center. They got help from the United Way. All because the United Way got help from you. The United Way. It brings out the best in all of us. College sports in the South. It's more than entertainment. It's a way of life. I'm Tim Brando, inviting you to join us for all the flavor and excitement. Southern Style, Friday nights on Sports South. Has a dream. I don't always get an investing idea between 9 and 5. So when it clicks, I do my homework. And I call Charles Schwab. I can call Schwab at any hour for quotes, news, earnings. And when I buy or sell, I get commission savings too. For free information about Schwab services, call toll-free 800-338-8000. Back at the Omni, and here's Brent Gretzky across the line, and he didn't get it once, he got it twice. Kerry Clark playing like his older brother Wendell, a rambunctious soul, and then Gillingham wrapped up Gretzky as well, so he felt it twice. And... Uh, Gillingham just tackled him. That was not the penalty, believe it or not. It was the Clark first uh, check with his stick, and then Gretzky gave him a little bit of a glove sandwich as well. So Gillingham and then look at Stevenson well. come in there and keep Gretzky away to uh, avoid the penalty. Good play by Stevenson. There you see Gretzky, 160 pounds, dripping wet. They have him working with nutritionists to try and figure out a way to get a little poundage on the frame, but built like his other two brothers, long and lean. And uh, he's easily, in the physical play, bounced off the puck. Now Hodge with the puck. The Knights on the power play. Still trailing two to nothing. This is now their ninth power play opportunity. Osborne going low for the near post. A good skate save by Trefalon. Now Julia. Osborne cutting for the net. Hodge for the deep slot of goal! Who's upset? It's a two-to-one score on a power play goal by the Atlanta Knights. We'll have to see if it was deflected or if Hodge's low blast found the net all by itself. I believe Capuano was stationed in front, got a piece 
of it. It definitely was deflected with a couple of white shirts in front of the goal. Trefloff may have been screened on it. Osborne makes the original pass to the left wing side. It was dumped to the point, and then with a player station in front, Capuano may have gone off Kevin Guy. Osborne was there too. It is now a 2-1 to one lead in favor of Salt Lake. The first power play goal and nine opportunities for the Knights. And there's obviously an old Atlanta Flames yeah. fan enjoying that one. So six and a half minutes into the third period, the Knights finally get on the scoreboard. This has happened to Salt Lake over the year and uh, last season as well. A number of penalties with nine. Can the odds are you're going to score one. And the Knights have been a strong third period team most of the year. is deflected up over the glass into the crowd. Number 20, Stan Drulia. Also Drulia gets an assist. Hodge gets an assist. Indeed, the goal will go to Capuano. Dave gets his fifth of the year. Time of the goal, six and a half minutes into the third period. And there, Bob Francis... A little concern now that perhaps the momentum, which was Atlanta's in the first period, definitely Salt Lake's in the second period, now may be swinging back to Atlanta. Drulia's fifth of the year, his third power play goal from Hodge and Drulia at 6.30, and it's a 2-1 game. Now the puck in the Salt Lake zone, and cleared by the Golden Eagles. They break out of it, two on two. McCarthy scores! He got it inside the post! Littman, and coming down the angle, didn't have it quite right to the near side. A big goal for the Golden Eagles who come right back and reestablish the two-goal lead. McCarthy made no mistake on a low shot to the near side, just inside the pipe. It's 3-1, to one, Golden Eagles. McCarthy's a big man down the right wing side, and he just lets go a bullet, a lot of wood on the shot, low to the glove, and the Golden Eagles strike back to take a two-goal lead. Again, uh, a big drive, and he really let go as a whipper, and the Golden Eagles up by two. His sixth goal of the year, and now the Atlanta Knights thought they had momentum instead. A big goal coming back for the Golden Eagles. Here's Gretzky at center. Hodge trying to play it across the line. Instead, now it's dumped in by LaPuma. Hodge the first one to it, far side. That much time remaining in the hockey game. The Knights again trailing two to Salt Lake. And the Golden Eagles clear the zone. McCarthy, a third-round Flames pick in 1991. He's only 20 years of age. The youngest player on the Salt Lake hockey team. And my, oh, my. Uh, Howitzer down the right wing side. Big shot indeed. Big goal. Big two points here for Salt Lake finishing off this long road trip as they try and establish themselves a little bit in the Western Conference. Now Gretzky, nice move in front. Had it poke checked off his stick as he was going down. And they clear it all the way down. We've got a nice and call coming here. And we're going to take time out. Three to one. The Golden Eagles lead the Knights. 11.46 to go in the hockey game. You're watching the IHL on Prime Network. Eclipse. Noun. The motion of one heavenly body passing in front of another. An eclipse occurs only with the perfect alignment of arcs and curves and angles. Eclipse, verb, to surpass, to leave others behind. Eclipse, from Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. Now get up to $2,000 off a 92 Eclipse GSX with factory-to-dealer incentives. This is the medal Schlitz just won at the Great American Beer Festival. Schlitz won Best American Lager Beer, beating several major brands. We're proud of this medal, but we're even more proud of the quality and great taste of Schlitz beer. So choose what the judges at the Great American Beer Festival chose. Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Watch Sandy McCarthy coming right at you. And man, he uh, beat uh, the goaltender Littman low to the glove side. 
And a rocket for McCarthy. You know, uh, he's a big man. Uh, he's a size 6'3", 225. The Flames drafted him for the toughness and for the play along the boards. If they could get some goals from him, that's great. And one of those rare commodities, a guy that can skate and score along with playing the body at that size. When you get that size, free wheeling up the ice like that, you get an awful lot of momentum behind that big shot. Now it's center ice, the puck played. And Nikolic rolls it into the Atlanta zone. It becomes now a little more of a territorial game for the Golden Eagles. With 11.20 left to go here in the hockey game. They'll want to become a little more protective. They certainly don't want to take any silly penalties here. Now the puck along the far side, Nikolic. Stevenson runs into the boys. And a jam at three. They tie up and we'll have the faceoff between Stevenson and Nicholas. We're here at the Omni and we certainly hope you're enjoying the telecast. The first of many on Prime Network this year, the IHL. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights. 3-1 to one is the score. 11-10 remaining in the hockey game. Bob Francis has to be pleased that McCarthy scored that goal. The Eagles trying to catch a 10-40 flight. And did not want overtime here this evening. So maybe he'd set something to the bench to hurry up and get another goal. Although it's not over yet. 11 minutes. <laughs> No, you're, I, I took a little teasing and ribbing from your coach, Bob Francis. Uh, I'm the uh, regular radio voice of the Atlanta Knights uh, and have the privilege of doing these telecasts on Prime. And of course, Mike is the radio voice of the Golden Eagles and joining us on this telecast. There's a shot. And Bob Francis is saying, sure, sure, you'll be playing it right down the middle. Oh, Berglund stood up right at his blue line by Holden. Holden, a big guy at 6'3", 210, made sure Berglund didn't get down the ice with the puck on that play. Either play the puck or play the body, and Holden did what he does best, played the body on that one. Now the Knights jump it in. Earlier, Gilling had a scoring chance into the Atlanta zone. He bids for the hat trick. Well, that'd be a thrill for that guy. Double his output in one game. Now, here's Clark across the line. A low shot. Stick saved by Lippman. And Stolk has it at center. Exactly 10 minutes to go in the hockey game. Across the line, Gretzky fires! And a glove saved by Trefilov. And a good one. Got enough of it to steer it wide of the post. Now Gretzky digging after it. Capuano can't control it. The Golden Eagles send it up the near side. Boston pinching in, but McCarthy hits Chernomaz. His return pass taken away by Capuano. Nine and a half minutes left. The clock becoming a factor for Gene Ubriaco in the night. Now Hodge rolling it in front. A bouncing puck. Tip toward the net by Capuano. But Treffel off again with a good save. Littman takes a bump, tied up with McCarthy. Littman pushes the puck here to Boston. Littman trying to get free, finally does. He's back in the cage. And now here's Shane Stevenson. Stevenson up to the inside. Behind the net he comes, looking for the centering pass. Goes down, trying to actually pass it to himself. Now Rivers, his team changing on the play, and Buchanan bumps it in. And they'll rule it offside. You know, it's amazing, Mike. Shots on goal favor Atlanta almost 2-1, to 32-17. to 17, And they've had all those opportunities on the power play, and yet Trefiloff has just slammed the door all but once. Yeah, nine power plays for Atlanta. The Knights have to be very frustrated. The Golden Eagles very excited about a, a road victory. Uh, they've been outshot every game on the road trip. This is their fifth game of the trip. But uh, if they can pull out uh, another victory for them, they would be uh, very happy about the fact that they could have that goaltending and kill off those penalties and steal a road win. That's the kind of game you want to win on the road. Now Shane Steven, who had a, Stevenson, who had a cup of coffee with the Boston organization, won the draw. The Knights bang it to center, but the bouncing puck is played instead by St. Pierre. Nicholas throws it into the zone. Liddy sends it over to the far side. That's Littman, the goaltender. And 
Sean Rivers play to center. Carried now by Holden. And now the Knights reload the gun in their own zone. Nearing the eight-minute mark left in the hockey game. Here's Osborne, the league's leading goal scorer. Nice move around Nikola from a bad angle. Fire! Triple off! Got it between the pads and held on. Wow, another great save by him. He was actually backing up into his goal crease area, squeezed the pads together, and was able to make the stop. That one actually had so much mustard on it, he actually fell back a little bit in that goal crease area, but still kept the puck from going over that red line. Osborne made a nice move to get to this point and then blistered a low shot and Trefilov got it. He looked behind him for a moment also to see if it had gone in. Osborne, a former first-round St. Louis pick with the big right-handed shot and Trefilov, as mentioned, was able to make the thing. Osborne played most of the Dijel career in Peoria. Now with the Tampa Bay organization. In a free agent year, he's looking to have a big year and see if he can make his way to the NHL and sign with anybody next year. Now Wartman to Clark. Cross ice, Boston plays it for Atlanta. The Knights need a goal in a hurry just to have the opportunity to pull the goaltender and create a tie. And they had tough luck against Trefilov. He's been spectacular. Now the Puma shot. Blocker save. Cleared ahead but not out. Rod behind the net for Vincelet. Vinny Sanders went right through and in front was Bluea, but had a stick tied up. He couldn't make a play. Salt Lake throws it ahead. We have a ruling of a hand pass here. And we'll have uh, a face-off coming up here in a moment. We're here at the Omni. The score is 3-1. to one. The Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights. Todd Gillingham with two goals. Sandy McCarthy with the third one. The scoring heroes for the Golden Eagles. But the real hero, their outstanding goaltender, Andre Trefilov, has kicked them all out but one. Hard to believe. Uh, it seems so long ago that Manon Rayom played her five minutes in this hockey game. But Trefilov, again, uh, 31 saves on 32 shots here tonight. He's a 4-1-1 on the road. He's 8-2 on home ice, and whether it's home or uh, on the road, he's been strong uh, all season long for the Salt Lake hockey team. 2.72 goals against away from the Delta Center coming into the game here tonight. Now lands with a little room as it roll off the stick to the corner. Eyes up there, but air plays the puck behind the net. Pops over Berglund's stick. Capuano loses the chase, but gets the puck from Turnemiles right in front of the front of the air. Knocked down by Guy on a big play defensively by Salt Lake. Now Turnemiles the other way. The Eagles trying to pad the lead. A shot thrown high off the glass. Bouncing right through the crease. And a shot by Bros And a big save by Littman. A crazy carom off the glass. And almost another one there for the Golden Eagles. Now Berglund dumps it in. Guy has it from Trefilov. Eagles have been outshot here tonight, but uh, quite a few of their chances have been from close in. There's a pass that pours them right in the back of the head. Now digging at it, Julia keeps it alive. The Knights keep it in, a bouncing puck now cleared by the Golden Eagles. Nearing the six minute mark left in the hockey game. Three to one, Salt Lake leading Atlanta. Our first telecast on Prime. We hope you're enjoying it and will be with us all season long as we follow the IHL. We did the All-Star game from here last year. We'll be doing the All-Star game in Phoenix. Here's one all alone. Forsland, wait, scores! He went top shelf as Littman went down and it's 4-1 to one Golden Eagles. A commanding three-goal lead now late in the hockey game. Wow, Forsland set up and across the line. The only Swedish-born player in the International League took that pass across the blue line and uh, is getting the congratulatory pats from his teammates. He worked in all alone. He stopped and then just scooped it up high just underneath the crossbar for a 4-1 to one Salt Lake lead. 
He played 38 games in Calgary last year. At 10 or 22 games for Salt Lake, scores his 10th goal of this year. Thomas Forsland, a big play there. It's 4-1 to one now, and we're coming back for more hockey from the Omni after we take this time out. Five minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the game, and the Golden Eagles lead by three. This is the IHL on Prime. Introducing Minivac, the amazing miniature cleaning system designed to take on hundreds of chores no ordinary tools can handle. Minivac cleans away dust from camera lenses, computer keyboards, figurines, or stereo equipment. Minivac's powerful motor vacuums away dust and dirt. It comes with two wand attachments, two ultra-soft brush nozzles, and a reusable vacuum bag. Keep one in the car for cleaning along the dash, steering column, stereo, ashtrays, and seats. Minivac is perfect for removing dust and debris from pictures, models, and those impossible-to-reach crevices. In this special television offer, you get Minivac with all five attachments, plus convenient storage case for only $19.95. Here's how to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free now, 1-800-533-1400. That's 1-800-533-1400. Minivac is only $19.95, plus $435 shipping and handling. Call now. That's 1-800-533-1400. Thomas Forslund's goal a moment ago, his 10th of the year, makes it a 4-1 to score with Mike Barrick, Ken Double back at the Omni, and we're ready to play hockey. The face-off at center ice. And Gretzky trying to push the puck in, is held up. And now the Golden Eagles can certainly afford to play a game of keep away here with a three-goal lead late in the hockey game. Now the Knights try to feed a long pass. The player falls down. Here's Gretzky. Gretzky for John Bluer. Fired it too far past him. Now Johnny B tries the centering pass. Now Haas. Back to Jean Bluin. Bouncing puck. And he ends up giving it to Lapuma out of the zone. Tough break there as Gretzky fed Bluin. Couldn't catch the pass. Kevin Workman fell down at his blue line, allowing that two-on-one to develop. Oh, Gretzky gives up the puck, trying to be cute with it. St. Pierre feeds it in. Keeps it alive along the near board. The centering pass pushed here to the near side, and Gretzky takes a big bump from Kevin Guy. Guy falls down. They're still trying to dig the puck loose. Jammed up along the boards. Now it's cleared to center. Luan fires a shot wide. And it's played by the Golden Eagles. Here comes Spruce. His shot knocked down by Boston. The puck cleared by Jason Lafreniere. He takes a bump from Clark. And it pops over Stoltz's stick, and it's free at center ice for Kevin Guy. He bangs it off the near board. Played back by Atlanta and then played back by Guy. His long shot knocked down by Lippmann. As we near the four-minute mark left in this hockey game. And the Knights feed it up the far side. Berglund around a check. Feeds Vincelet. His shot knocked down and played by Chernemann. He feeds it here to the near side. McCarthy takes a bump as he throws the puck into the zone. And they'll rule icing. That much time remaining in the hockey game, and the Atlanta Knights having to climb the mountain now. It's not just a little hill, it's a mountain, Mike. A terrific game for the Golden Eagles here on enemy ice. Outshot 32-19, and Trefiloff has been brilliant once again. The penalties have been a factor. Nine power plays for the Knights. They've scored only one. And next week, uh, another great game, Cleveland and Cincinnati. And I was there last week. I was there this past uh, Friday night. What a building. The Cincinnati Gardens, it is loud in there. You know, I'll tell you what, that was the great old barn where Oscar Robertson scored all his points for the old Cincinnati Royals in the NBA. And the uh, hockey team has moved in there, moved from the East Coast League to the IHL. They packed that place with almost 10,000 a night. And now right in front, a shot for Turnamaz, and he almost got it home. But they love their hockey in Cincinnati, and it's a very entertaining brand of hockey in a, in a neat old building. The atmosphere is just great. Now the puck chopped into the corner. Lands plays it behind his own net with 3.20 left to go in the hockey game. 
His long pass to Capuano, and away from the pass, back down, you've got Buchanan all wrapped up with McCarthy and a little bit of a waltz me around Katie. Nobody's thrown a punch yet. And once again, uh, Buchanan at 6'2", 190. McCarthy's got this a little bit of size and weight advantage there. Now starts to throw some punches, but Buchanan trying to fight back. And they hit the ice, and the linesmen jump in to separate them. It's funny, McCarthy had uh, 892 minutes in penalties in his three years of junior hockey in the Quebec League, and Buchanan had over 140 last year for the Saskatoon Blades of the Western Hockey League, a free agent signed by Tampa Bay this summer, and uh, not much, uh, Ken, of a scrap there, not a lot of punches uh, connecting. As the play went down the rink, those two just remained tied up on the glass, and they had the arms tied up on both of them. They have both gone to their respective locker rooms, I think, because this will be five-minute fighting penalties with just 3.16 remaining in the hockey game. They'll not see action again unless there's overtime. And there won't be overtime unless the Atlanta Knights can light it up in a hurry. And Mr. Trefiloff has made sure that that hasn't happened all night long. Has he been great? What exactly we were anticipating? Some fireworks in front of the Salt Lake net by Trefiloff, who is a, just a great goalie and fun to watch. Trefiloff uh, did not have an NHL team growing up in Kirovo, Russia. And was ecstatic to be drafted by the Calgary Flames. Thought he'd be drafted by the Hartford Whalers. He played a scoreless uh, tie there in a Super Series game, but uh, was drafted by the Flames. You know, he makes Tony Esposito's style seem orthodox. And Esposito was all over the ice in his great career with the Chicago Blackhawks. And he is all over the place in goal. And uh, again, that glove is terrific and tremendous reflex. Many of the NHL scouts question if that style would be successful with the wall. Now here's Clark with the puck intercepted. It'll be interesting to see when he gets his opportunity in the big league. And it'll come, there's no question, at some point in time, if that style does work. Now the Golden Eagle play the puck into the far side. It's played there by Struth. As Wharton cutting in front, try to beat him on a good play by Lands. Tied that pass up, and then Lands sends it all the way down. No icing here. Two minutes left in the hockey game. Four to one in favor of the Golden Eagles. They're going to escape Atlanta, it appears, with two points and a big win. And now we've got him going again. Away from the action on the near side, Stevenson got all over. I believe it's Gillingham who gets up, and yes, it is Todd Gillingham who scored a pair, and now Gary Clark gets involved also. And Salette has him all tied up. Stevenson really wanted a piece of Gillingham. You recall earlier in this game, it was Gillingham that just ran over David Littman on the play into the Atlanta zone. And if you're late in the game, uh, Gillingham is not too popular. And he still wants to get at the Atlanta player, Stevenson. That was the original pair of players that were involved. And Derek Martin orders the gate open, and Stevenson sent to the locker room. Now, he wants Gillingham off to his locker room. Unfortunately, some of the fans starting to throw debris on the ice, and that's something's always bothered me. Yell and scream and have a lot of fun, but don't interfere with the game by throwing stuff on the ice. Fans that have followed the IHL, and particularly in Phoenix, know all about it, as Todd Gillingham was uh, the first player. It's going to go down to the history books to score against Manon Rayom in a regular season game uh, earlier in this game tonight. But the Golden Eagles are known for this, Ken, and I've been around it. I've seen Stu Grimson and Rick Hayward and players such as Zach Grimson now playing with the Reaper. Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> and uh, they've uh, had co Paul Baxter as the head coach, who was uh, one rough, tough co customer in his days in the National Hockey League, and over the years, the Eagles have built up a reputation under the Calgary Flames organization as a team that wins some games, loses some games, but it's always entertaining uh, as far as the fisticuffs are concerned. 
So Stevenson and Gillingham shake things up in the Omni here for a while as David Littman skates around and gets a little refreshment and a pause in the play. And we'll find out in a moment just what Derek Martin, the referee, has ruled regarding penalties. Ken, you see this quite a bit with a game at this point out of reach. Four to one, Solik in the lead. Uh, the home fans frustrated, I think. And, you know, it gives the, the fans that are still here something to cheer about. And that's what happened on that play to the corner. I think sometimes uh, fans who may not like the fighting that much, but I'll tell you what, the fans were excited that they left the goal and wanted to see more. As Bob Francis says, let's get this game over with and uh, forget all of this. At the same time, give the NHL and then the lower leagues uh, a lot of credit as they have adopted the rules changes so that there are instigator penalties and other penalties that help keep the silly nonsense and the silly fighting under control. Stevenson gets two for instigation, five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. As you see on the left of your screen, Kurt Bennett, he's an assistant coach with the Knights and a former Atlanta Flame was honored during the second intermission. Evidently, the penalties, Gillingham and Stevenson, five each for fighting with Stevenson, that instigation penalty, and as a result, the fifth power play coming up for Salt Lake. And so the Knights, with just now a minute 45 left in the hockey game, will finish the game shorthanded. Although, uh, the way it's gone, the outcome, somewhat of a moot point at this point, the Golden Eagles are going to march out, march, uh, out of here. Big pump as uh, Turnamaz takes a hit from Lacuma. With their 16th win of the year and two big points on the road. Now the puck played along the near boards. And another big pump. Fans along the near boards hoping for something more than just a check. Nicolas and Rivers get the sticks up. There's a shot on goal. Lapuma takes a run at Nicolas, and now Lapuma and Nicolas go at it. Nicolas has him down in a hurry. And the goaltender trying to step in, Littman. On Nicolas as he gets Lapuma down. The linesman pounce on them. And we'll have a couple of more players banished from this one. That's round number two for Nicolak in this game. Is uh, being escorted by the linesman and having some gestures for the fans here as well. It's uh, somewhat of a high five from looks like McCarthy. Does it seem like there. an Ivy League type of guy to you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably has his master's degree or working toward that, huh? Alex Nicolak, uh, 6'1", 215 pounds, obviously, and Rick Lands for the Atlanta Knights, although that I don't was, believe was he was, yeah, it was the Puma was the other in combatant in that one. And uh, escorted out of here on the far wing with uh, just over a minute left of the game, 104 to be exact, and Nicolak is going to get the instigation, I believe, on this one. Well, just about running out of room on the penalty side of the score sheet here with a lot of fights at the end of the hockey game. He's still in the runway area. He's not going to the dressing room. Wants to see the end of this game. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, closing things out now with uh, the 4-1 to one score. He does get the instigation penalty. And uh, you see Bob Francis and the Salt Lake bench. And Francis is probably saying to himself, come on, let's get this thing over with and uh, catch that flight. One minute remaining in the period. So now we'll finish the game four on four in front of the goaltenders. And now just one minute left in the hockey game. Four to one, the Golden Eagles in front. As Land feeds it ahead to Vincelet. Run into the boards by Stoke on a good bump right there. Just a good healthy check. The puck back across the line, deflected back to center ice with 35 seconds left in the hockey game. The Golden Eagles have played an outstanding game here. They weathered a first period storm in which they were decidedly outshot by Atlanta. It ended nothing to nothing. They took a two to nothing lead. And the Knights made it two to one in the third period. It took Salt Lake about 12 seconds to answer that goal with one of their own. And now we're gonna have the four to one victory with just 10 seconds left in the hockey game. Lands with the puck. Feeds it here to center ice. 
It's dumped back in. The horn sounds. That's it. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles split a two-game series and come into Atlanta winning the second game. The final score, 4-1. to one. Congratulations all the way around for their fine netminder. As you look at Todd Prost making his way to offer congratulations for Trefiloff, who was absolutely outstanding between the pipes for the Golden Eagles. Well, the, the final here, 4-1. to one. And uh, Trefilov skates off 31 saves, and some of the fans, even in Atlanta, giving him uh, the high fives, and he was uh, sensational in goal tonight for Salt Lake. He's the 13th win of the season, and uh, lowering his goals again. 4-1, to the final score is Trefilov skates off triumphant, and we'll be back to wrap things up from the Omni after this. This is the IHL on Prime. Bain breaks out now. Here comes Derek Fenton. Fenton going down the right wing. Fenton cutting in. Fenton dropping it back. Ferraro scores! Chris Ferraro, the hat trick! Join Nesson in January for the best in Hockey East action. We'll bring you seven exciting contests from one of the best leagues in college hockey. We'll kick the new year off on Friday, January 8th with the UNH.